yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a classic. Because we got a classic man, Philly D, on today's episode. Classic parkour practitioner. Practicing the classic moves that you want to know and see. Why are they classic? Because he's doing them. That's why. Um, but for real, if you don't know who Phil, Philip Matthew Doyle is, you need to jump into a history book for parkour and just see some of the amazing things he's done. One of the most influential practitioners um, to date and still still putting out some amazing stuff and s- about to even drop some even more incredible videos, I think. And we talk about that and we talk about just philosophies on parkour and just having fun and catching up. He's a friend. Haven't seen him for a couple of years, but it's good to just hang out with the man. So I hope you guys dig it. Um, another one that you might want to listen to with Phil, if you're interested more in his history and some of the things that got him into parkour, etc., go check out the Modus podcast. Did a lot of great questions with him on that. And um, we just appreciate Phil coming on. Much love. And thank you guys for listening. Here we go. Philly D. The OG, capital G on that shit. <laughs> what there's just like me lying in bed <laughs> <laughs> i mean yeah yeah it is just you lying in bed but uh you're looking handsome dude you got the button up crushing oh, yeah, it. I got, I got, I've, I've recently discovered depop so i need to be careful because i've what's that depop well the reason i think depop is awesome because i'm i'm a man who has lost a lot of garments over the years um that i really liked and cherished or whatever mm-hmm. so you could just you can just you can search using you can like I got a green champion jumper that I had about five years ago because I just looked up that type of jumper and eventually I found it and you could just buy it for what, like 20 quid because most of it's quite cheap. Uh, is there, a, is it UK only? Sounds like it. I have no idea. Is it people like selling their own garments then? But Or is yeah, it like it's fresh? Like, it's like, it's a, yeah, it's like, you know, you get these. It's peer to peer. Apparently these people exist who, um, <laughs> Like they buy stuff and then they resell it on uh, on eBay. Like people make livings out of that. They're like fashion. It kind of makes it quite easy. Mm. It's also it's an excellent place to buy parkour trainers because they're cheap. And like the person might have worn them a few times, but they wore them to walk around. Break it so in for you. They didn't get broken in. They didn't get worn in. Well, they just give um, you a little. And they're a lot cheaper. Mm. Deep pop. All right. Look it up. Check D E P O P. It's a good. It's a good little app. It's just, it's quite easy. I bought, I bought a burgundy suit for 20 quid. <laughs> what do you need no, a burgundy? I'm bur- not even hundred percent sure. I'm not even hundred percent sure it's going to fit. It might be a little bit tight, but. And what are you going to do with that burgundy wham. suit? Um, say that again. What are you going to do with it? Well, I'll try it on for, first and I'll probably <laughs> wear it a few times a year. <laughs> a man looks good in a suit. You're not wrong. I need to get one. I don't have any adult male clothes i have mostly young men clothes young boy clothes even i mean i've got obviously i'm sure you know the collection of shirts yeah you got a good collection there's a lot of shirts there's, there's probably i think i don't know cause some some go and then some new come so i don't know i think we're in the region of about 30 maybe <laughs> and then annoying so I, I obviously before this um corona stuff I was working super part time at a very, I think actually, according to the Times, it was voted the best curry restaurant in the UK. Damn. And what do you think? So I've got a lot, I've got a lot of white shirts. Oh, what? Why white? Which, which are, well, because that's what we wore. I I, I prefer white. White's, mm. white's good. Yeah. I don't look that good in white. I have bad skin. It looks like I'm too pale. I need to like get out in the sun when I wear white. I have to be, there's a certain amount of vitamin D I need to absorb. Otherwise I just, well, I'm not, I'm not very tanned. I think the fact (laughs) that I have blonde hair and blue eyes is why, what I think that's good with white. Yeah. Yeah. That's probably Um, it. Also good with blue. This shirt, it's very good for my blue eyes. It makes you (laughs) notice them. Hey, I know about the blue trick, right? I got the blue eyes too. And that is always a good look for me. The blue, the dark blues, the light blues. Just give me the blues. But yeah, the white, I, mean, I don't know what it is about like, the white. Only ever so slightly interested in fashion. Me and my, me and my sister always say, it's, it's not about how other people think you look. It's just about how, like, if I think I look good, then I'm more confident. I have, in, in all aspects, I'll have a better day. Oh, so yeah. it is important, just for my own psyche. 
<laughs> no, it absolutely Probably. is. And I found out that often what I like, people think I look r- really stupid in, but I still have to wear it. Otherwise, I don't feel myself. Can't feel like myself. Yeah, and then I do have um, strange um, psychological flaws that or hang-ups that I, I don't mind. I'm going to live with them within <laughs> parkour. Like, if I, if I want to have a really good day's training, I kind of basically only have one pair of tracksuit bottoms that I can wear for that day. <laughs> And it's my Adidas, um, the ones with the, and also those trackies are kind of awesome because if you do like any martial arts tricking or gymnastics, it just, everything looks better in those trackies because of the lines, Mm, mm. because of the stripes. What do you think that is? Anyway, I think, I mean, I have them too. Like we all have like little OCD things, I think like rituals that we have to get into for training. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what some people, some people are worse than others. I, I, I often notice people. And I used to do this, but I don't anymore. I used to like a bit like Rafael Nadal, you know, the tennis player. Uh-huh. He's always, always, he's always doing this. Yeah, like, yeah. Every, obviously, every every tennis player bounces the ball, <laughs> but he's always doing this brush behind the ears and the nose every time because <laughs> because he's he's got it into his head that if he doesn't do that, his serve's going to be shit. <laughs> Unfortunately, and we all have that in parkour as well. I used to. Me and Danny both, in fact, we sometimes, if we're really scared of something, we'll do a hop at the beginning of our run-up for some... St- I have no idea why. <laughs> and I'm sure we're not the only people that do that. It's like the hop is like, okay, once I've hopped, <laughs> that's it, I'm in. I'm committed, it has to happen. Um, and a lot of people, I'm sure you know, the common one is like brushing the bottoms of your shoes. That one is hilarious. I see people wipe that their shoes 50 times before they do something sometimes. And the, the annoying thing is the only time that that's necessary is if you're jumping to metal. Yeah, yeah. The only time, because slick metal, if you've got dust on your feet, it will be a little bit slippery. And it's amazing <laughs> what you can do. Like if you're doing a cat leap to a, a metal fence that's flat, mm. ideally, um, your feet will grip so beautifully <laughs> if you brush that dust off. Yeah. Um, also, potentially brushing dust off before doing a running jump is kind of inept because your shoes are going to pick up dust on the run up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, maybe Who's not as much dust, but yeah, uh, it is a weird thing. It is a weird thing that I, I know that a lot of my friends do that, and I do that, but I'm not as twitchy about it. I give myself a few wipes. I probably give myself two, three extra wipes max, like wipes yeah. I don't need. But yeah, same. Like, w- I, I think I do that. I think when I wipe, <laughs> I, give I do do about three. Why do I think three is better than one? <laughs> Surely the one just gets it all off there. Well, I don't know what that is, man. But I think it's like <clears throat> you need rituals. I don't know. You just need rituals to get in the zone. You need to feel like yeah. you're doing everything in order. You're making you're making the decisions you want to make, even if they're trivial, to get yourself into like, yeah, this rhythm of like, okay, I'm in touch. I do this. Boom. I always do that. Just like that. I look like a, I feel fresh. I'm doing it my way or whatever. You have You can develop a style around how you wipe your shoes maybe. And that can translate now into like, all right, that's how I want to go into my, I don't know. You know, you set the scene, yeah. you set okay, the scene true. for yourself. So one of my rituals actually, I obviously, so say most pairs of trainers, you, you don't like, I don't understand it. Cause you know, when you're a kid, you sort of, and often in television, for example, there's like an older brother, like having a go at his younger brother for not tying his shoelaces or something like that. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And then he does it for it for him. Oh, like, yeah. Every single pair of my trainers, except the ones I train in, the laces are tied and they've never been untied. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> you slip them on. Dude, And even my horn. training shoes, I slip them on. But my training shoes, I slip them on and I often, I think Kai taught me this. This is one of these ridiculous theories. So I normally, I'll wear my Nike SBs or something most of the day and I'll have my training shoes in my bag because the training shoes, we burn through them. So they want, they want to be on your feet as little as possible. Mm-hmm. And then to take it another step way too far, which I think I got from Kai, I'm not sure, Kai Willis, um, is untying the laces and having them loose when you're not training. Because think about it, you know the mesh that's on the top, that often rips sometimes, and ah. that would be because your foot's sort of bulging through. Give it some breathing I mean, room. Give it some... Yeah, give them some give breathing room. Give your shoes a chance is, to recover from the tightness. I think it's very close to unnecessary, but I think it is a good, a good practice. That might be and a little too it. far. That may be, that nope. may be more sense, makes more sense for you big boys. I noticed that like, I don't have to have as much 
concern for durability because I only weigh like a buck fifty or like you know I don't know what it is that in stone. What's but. what's what's the yeah? What is I think I'm like I don't know. I mean I could look it up because I'm interested. Yeah, I'm yeah. eighty two and a half kilos. Let's see real quick. Let's see. I don't know why I'm doing it on my phone. Yeah, I'll do it on my phone, not my computer. Right. 82.5. You're like 181 pounds, 182 pounds. Okay. So that's. Is that what it is? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm not, I'm old, I'm not, I'm like 68 or 69 maybe kilos. <laughs> You're, but you're buck 50. I'm a buck 50. You're a buck 50. I'm light. Okay. But I'm I do, putting it I do on, like baby. that slang. I'm putting I'm it on. Buck 80. <laughs> there you go. I yeah. mean, I think also, I think as far as parkour practitioners go, um, I don't like saying athletes because I don't know, apart from Tim Champion, I don't think any of us are actually athletes, really. Would you say? Uh, I don't know. What makes what separates Tim Champion from the chaff? I, th I think an athlete is someone who, like, is I mean obviously this is semantics but um, in my opinion an athlete is someone who trains physically far more than uh, creatively and like oh I'm failing to explain this this is annoying mm. but hopefully people will get what I mean well, no, let me, let me try you're saying that they but, spend the majority the, whatever the portion of their pie training is there's a bigger portion for conditioning and like developing ath like strength and uh, something that's not yeah, a skill, something that's not a performance than the, the chai, the part of the chai, that part of the chai, the part, part of the pie that is developers devoted to play or performance yeah. or like the actual practice exactly. of like, I mean, obviously I think I am being perhaps a bit pedantic unnecessarily um, and we are obviously athletes, but I just think like athletics is far more based on, like say the sprinters will just train physically very, very hard, quite a similar method of training, not as much variety because they want, they basically would need their legs to be mm -hmm. like performing at the highest rate of power and for a, not that long a period of time or whatever. Um, same as long jumpers. So they, they, they got one, they got one job. The pole vaulter has one thing, one thing to do. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Train really hard to use what, the pole. What to about get like as a football or, uh, or, or a high jump? Well, no. See, this is where I'm being an idiot. We are, we are athletes, <laughs> parkour people, and so are footballers. But just like some of us, and I think I'm included. Although I do think potentially I've been, I think my reputation is flawed because I've always been perhaps too modest. So I think people think that I just don't train at all and then go out and do sick jumps. Oh, yeah. Like like a skateboarder because I've just got like a strong mind. I do train and I did do a lot of conditioning when I'm old, when I was younger. Mm. Um, less so in my 20s, I'll admit. But like I still do train like an athlete. I just don't lift weights. And you never did? No. Mm. But I did do a lot of repetition like a hundred of a rail precision, turning around, jumping back. If you don't do all a hundred, well, maybe not a hundred, because that's a lot. <laughs> but like 50, you've got to go there and back. And if you come off that rail, you've got to start at the beginning again. Oof, oof. Stuff like that. Lots See, of balancing. <clears throat> and then small height drops a hundred times, landing as soft and upright as possible. Really? You drill that? Yeah, I used to. As I like started, a skill like, or just I like just for like, the... I started like a foot. Ah. And trust me, go out, go out soon, and try and do like waist height wall drop. Just take that drop a hundred times, because mm. you will. It's it's weird because like obviously when you run you start sweating. When I do parkour, I don't sweat that much. When I go rock climbing, because of the intensity of holding your body up, I often start break a sweat rock climbing. Um, but trust me, you'll break a sweat doing that, and it's weird because you're like, I'm not, I'm, I'm barely doing anything. But you, the resistance of just a, a waist height drop is a lot of, um, like force going through your legs, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we could, we could get the, the whatever, the gravity equation, nine point eight meters a second, whatever, trying to multiply your body weight. <laughs> but it's like, you develop a lot, and you have to use that full. It is a full body thing if you're really trying to absorb everything the yeah, most to the like most capacity. 
shallow squats with yeah. whatever weight would make the equivalent, I guess. That's fascinating. I didn't know that um, you would train that though, because I always thought like you probably just trained the skill of parkour and you would invariably take a shitload of height drops or like a bunch of waist high drops throughout the day. And maybe that'd be part of part of your training, but I didn't think that you would actually specifically hone in on that and be like, I'm just going to drop well, I off think, this. I think, I think that's one of the potentially, it's a very good thing that I did. Mm. And it's because of a guy called Julian Donovan. He, um, one of the first people I started training with, he was the one that suggested it. I think he did it. I even did it with him at one point. Because if, if you could take, and I think I've started doing it again because I do, I'm going to train, I think the plan is very hard for mm -hmm. these first two years of university, which don't require that much of my time studying. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to probably like, I keep joking that I'm retiring. I'm not retiring. <laughs> I will always practice parkour. <laughs> but I kind of want to train really hard before I peak peak well produce some content let the world know i still exist um and then i can sort of disappear into an accounting career that's the plan um <laughs> so that for that to work i need to start training like an athlete yeah yeah it's a good plan i but like I, it i still don't think lifting weights is necessary though i don't know i don't know it's maybe, very maybe for your standing jump maybe for that but i don't think <clears throat> i think i don't know i don't know body type and everything for me if i do deadlifts once in a while it seems to help just because maybe i just don't need to maybe i need to do something else i don't know i think it's always individual like what people yeah, need I, mean, I did but, I, I i began and i think i will uh-oh Carol's weight training program which he's sort of half set up for me and he who is Callum? half his fault it's entirely my fault because Callum Powell. Oh, yeah, sorry. You just cut out for a second, so I didn't hear. Okay. Um, yeah, I think I will do his weight program. Um, but in my head, for some weird reason, I'd almost rather do it after yeah. I've retired. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. Well, it's very weird. Yeah, no, I've thought about that often because I'm like... It, it's where you want to put your energy. And sometimes it requires, like, to do a, the kind of challenges that I'm sure you're going to be trying to do that mm. are interesting to you. They require so much focus and they require so much technique precision that spending energy and output, and they're going to be high impact, I imagine. They're going to be, you're like, that's kind of your style. You put out a lot of power with your jumps and what flips and everything else there you do. There will be. There will be. <laughs> there'll, there'll definitely be some heavy impact on one leg. Oh, yeah. Okay. Times, so, well, sure. there you go. And with that kind of activity, I think you don't get that, like you said, like you have to get in great shape. And then it takes a lot out of you to train that way. You yeah, need so this is my issue. I think if I'm doing a serious weight training program, mm -hmm. am I going to have the fresh legs I want to do to do jumps for four hours and film some, some good stuff? Yeah. Um, and also there's the issue of, this might sound ridiculous and I'm, I'm not, I've never been sort of that well educated on the science <laughs> of how the body works or anything like that. But I think the practice of parkour building up and building up it means that all of your body is as strong as each of it if that makes sense i feel like if i'm working on my glutes a lot doing squats or whatever then like the ligaments and tendons in my feet and ankles aren't gonna match that same strength if that makes any sense no That's it makes theory, perfect anyway. sense no i, I um, mean yeah it is a theory because we don't know we're not doctors but yeah exactly I've i don't know felt i felt it i felt that what you're saying in my body is like you can't have yeah, four yeah, sticks yeah, yeah, you yeah, have yeah. to have like that toe to fingertip or toe to head not like to but, the tip I of your mean, skull. If, yeah, if I can train Callum's weight training maybe once a week and if that improves my jump, then that's perfect. Mm. That's a very good thing. Um, it might just challenge so, your yeah. body, challenge your, your muscle groups in just a slightly a new way enough to develop just a little bit more muscle tissue than you normally do training to. I think that's what it does for me. Yeah, but, and then I'd, I'd also have to be quite careful with diet potentially because I, I want to lose weight, not gain it. Oh, really? Yeah, um, I think I want to be sub eighty. Mm. I mean, I'm not. It's 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 a, it's a tough one though because I don't think there's that much fat on me to be perfectly honest. No, you um, you chiseled you chiseled from the the uh, marble of the gods. Last time I no, saw not you, quite. I'm I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm big. You big? I'm not. I'm not as much. You're getting up there. What? How know. old are you now? Twenty seven. Metabolism starting to slow down a little bit. That's peak. That's peak physical. Um, like you're saying, though, that is the time to peak. 
What, 27? They say that you're in your physical prime as a male from like 26 to 31 or something I heard one day, back in the day. Ah, uh, okay, that's good. So. I mean, it's, it's interesting because thinking about the fact that we're talking about how athletic parkour practitioners are, mm. um, surely that means, because a lot of it is skill technique, and we can't deny how important this is. Yeah, confidence. Yeah. I don't know. If, is everyone going to be watching the video? <laughs> mm -hmm. okay. He's pointing to his noggin, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, yeah, as Joe Hendo. I don't know. Did you did you see Hendo when he did his America tour? No, nah, he didn't come through Colorado, unfortunately. But what, what did, did Strong he? Strong Minds tour. Uh uh I didn't. I didn't. I do... I mean, as I'm, you might know. I don't know. I kind of. I still live under a rock, relatively speaking, when it comes to parkour. So I don't actually watch many videos. <laughs> yeah. Um, I do listen to the most podcast. I've only listened to one of yours. I'm sorry. Hey, you know, um, maybe because it's, it's it's good listening. Yeah. If I go to the shops to get some food instead of listening to music, I'll just listen to a podcast. It's it's interesting. Sometimes I drift off. Mm -hmm. Keelan and Rock Giles will babble, but some of it's actually quite interesting. Um, but anyway, yeah, I have to big up Pendo because that boy does have a strong mind. What did you go to one of his seminars, or how did you? No, but just like, I'll give you an example. Please. Um, I was in Brighton maybe last September and we were all training together me, Callum Powell, Joe Henderson um, a few others Jay Batrick, Sasha Powell and there was a challenge that me, Joe and Callum all tried mm. and Callum got it I didn't actually unfortunately um, it was sort of although he did it, so it, was, it was either stride or ply me or Joe did stride and then there's another jump to a windowsill and then you jump up and grab the windowsill above and then do a 180 back to the wall. Mm -hmm. And Callum and Joe got it, but Callum got it the old school way and I was trying it the old school way. I'm calling it old school. There's no school like the old school, by the way. Um, <laughs> there is definitely an old school of parkour. <laughs> Not necessarily that apt we'll within get to this that. context. I want to get to I'm that. Using it. Yeah. Um, me and Callum tried it about 15, 16, 17 times. And Joe just sort of watched us doing it. And then, if I remember correctly, he sort of walked off. He walked off like a little bit into the distance and then just like looked like he was thinking about it quite a lot. And then he just came back and I think maybe one, two, three attempts, he did it. Ah, uh, yeah. Amazing, because that's very, that's very fuel efficient. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, no, I know what you mean, fuel efficient. Ooh. That's something that I tried to do in my training, for sure, was try to eliminate the number of attempts as partially because I had a, it was me like trying to game the system a little bit and cheat and not have to be as strong as I needed to be, which kind of worked against me eventually. Um, well, that's, that's also a big thing that I'm working on at the moment mm, to achieve this mm. video because um, I have a list of jumps, only a list for Bristol. So I think the retirement is actually going to be, I've, I've got my Canon camera, it's quite exciting and I'm, I'm involved, I'm excited what music I'm going to use, but... I think there are going to be five retirement videos. Five. I need to stop saying retirement. Well, Basically, I want, to, I, want to, I want to film five like mm. videos that I am happy with at the top of my... Let's say they're peaking videos. Five <laughs> peaking videos. Physical peak videos. Yeah. Um, one of which will be the sock video. Ooh. Full sock video. Yeah. I mean, it might not be a whole song. Oh, no. I, I think it has to be a whole song. But I can obviously find a, a relatively short song. You know what I mean? <laughs> short song. You can cut some B-roll to you just walking around in the socks. Whatever you need to do, fill it out. But. Yeah. And I mean, unfortunately, the pressure of it is people have to watch the sock video and be like, oh, I wouldn't even want to do that in shoes. It has to be. Mm. The, I'm a dreamer, so it might not be at that level, but it needs that in my head. It needs to be <laughs> at that level. Um, so, yeah, sock, Bristol, Cambridge, Brighton, London. Oh, I love it. You have a whole That's little, five. and they'll each have their own little, uh, their own video. And you, are you going to pull it, pull it together, or are you going to release them in set? Like, do you, do you have a plan for no, that? No, I'll release them because obviously because of um, because of Corona as well, and the fact that I'm technically still at university, even though I'm not. I do all my studying here, where I'm with you right now, mm. or downstairs. Um, I'm in Bristol for, I think, till mid-June, probably, hopefully, that I can move either back to Cambridge or to Brighton. I'm not too sure. Mm. If I can't work in Cambridge this summer, then I may as well just go to Brighton, <laughs> and because Brighton's the parkour hub of the UK. Yeah. 
It seems like well, that. In my opinion. Especially, maybe it's like the older generation a little bit. Uh, I mean, the store boys have moved down there, right? A lot of them. The store several boys of them. there. Hendo, Kai. Yeah. Lynn. Um, <clears throat> there's a few others. Jay's there. I think, yeah, let's say if parkour was the most important part of my life, which it's not, mm-hmm. um, I would I would live in Brighton. That would be the tactical thing to do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, interesting. There's so much I want to talk about there. Um, like, what? <clears throat> why? Why make the peak videos? I kind of know why I think, but let's. See. Um, I don't know. I'd admit part of it's a, an ego thing. Um, part of it's like a project for me. It's a good motivator to actually be training hard again. To be mm-hmm. perfectly honest with you. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I think I might be upset that I'm saying this when I listen over to this <laughs> later, but um, I think it is partly to do with just my reputation in the scene or whatever, mm. because it's like people rated me quite highly when I was at, and a lot of people are bringing up that I was potentially at my peak when I was like 18, 19, but I don't think that's true. I just, I've been incredibly slack <laughs> on producing any content. And in fact, tr- to put it truly, I never actually was, focused on producing content i had mm. ambi sound filming mm. um i traveled quite a bit with different people who were making projects mm-hmm. um i did that concrete circus that was all claudio none of it was ever really stemmed from me yeah um and then obviously there's been like maybe like a black spot like people someone said to me the other day he was like you're making a good comeback bro i was like <laughs> what do you mean i never left <laughs> <laughs> oh man the, the, the parkour world is cruel that's for sure they forget fast. Mm. They forget fast, and exactly they, everybody talks. You're only as you're only as good as your last posted clip, apparently. So I don't know what that means, yeah. but it's just. And I, I think <clears throat> I, I don't think there's anything wrong with me caring about my clout within the urban sport that I do, the <clears throat> community. A, um, mm. I think it's I think it's 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 decent for that to be important. So yeah, could you go into that a little bit more? Because I think that's that's something that everyone's super touchy about. But it's like if. You, and I want to hear your thoughts on it. Like, why? Why is it okay? Well, the beautiful thing about parkour, because of the variety, or free running, the var- because of the variety of movements that we practice mm. and the complexities in different urban environments, there is absolutely no way someone could claim to be or be crowned the king or the best. Yeah, of it's course. All, it's all open to opinion, which is beautiful. But mm-hmm. I still like, there is obviously pleasure in people respecting you for what you do. Why would you deny that? Yeah. I don't know. So there's a good quote in True Detective where... Um, Season one or two? Matthew McCoy. Have you... Oh, the first one. First one's good. First, first one's one is, is written by a genius. Oh, um, really? Oh, yeah. That was an epic. I recommend it. Anyhow. But yeah, he just talks about the fact that there's a lot of people that try to pretend or deny that they judge other people. But if you don't judge other people then how do you make up an idea of yourself? Mm. Mm. You see, like, well, <laughs> yeah. So you need like, I don't know. I think may- maybe it's a modesty thing. Maybe it's a young thing, but yeah, I think I have no problem with caring about rep- my reputation within the parkour community, basically. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If someone respects you for what you do. That that's a compliment. Absolutely. And if, if, you, if we're going to like focus and practice a hobby, where the main aim is to improve, <clears throat> then that improvement or progression of being recognized is, is, is a beneficial thing. No one's ever going to be the best, mm-hmm. um, fortunately. And it's not about, I mean, I've never been one of these people who's against competition within parkour. I do agree. The main upsetting thing, and I'm coming to terms more with this now about FIG, for example, is there are so many organizations and there's, all, there's, there's always people that have done it. People that aren't actually a member of the community trying to develop something that is business related. Mm-hmm. That's why it's like, I mean, I'm, I'm a terrible person. Maybe this is because of my clout. <laughs> I don't think I've bought, I don't think I've purchased an item of parkour clothing from any of the brands. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> having said that, that is, that is how we can make it a self-sustaining community is by, giving money because like Motus, like Giles, obviously maybe he's majority the cameraman more than athlete, but he still practice it. He's still a, bit, a key member of the community. Mm-hmm. 
but um, there's a lot of people that have come from outside and seen the potential where there isn't actually much potential sadly um, it's not it's not a big money sport and I don't think it ever will be because of the lack of accurate competition I mean in my head they could if parkour was big enough and like worldly known enough mm-hmm. for Ninja Warrior to actually be Ninja Warrior so not loads of like uh silly climbing things and actually like just in my head I imagine obviously the pools of water body of water and they're just these massive strides but they're on the top of really small poles (laughs) yeah yeah do you know what I mean that would be yeah I've had the same vision yeah some real parkour focused ninja warrior would be incredible Mm -hmm. Um, I mean sadly and comically forgive me if you're listening the guys that set it up but probably the most successful at least in media attention, stemming from parkour a little bit is world chase tag. Yeah, yeah. I know. It is a little bit. I've had my <laughs> ambivalent thoughts about that. I'm always, a, when I, I mean, when it comes down to it, I'm always like, it's more, it's always good. It's always good if it's getting some energy attention towards parkour. I think eventually the spirit that we want to see, which is maybe more skill focused than just, tag yeah. that would, I mean uh, I, f- I find world chase tag is a bit like you know when someone tells you something funny happened the other day and they tell you what happened and you don't find it funny at all if you had to be there <laughs> yeah yeah when I'm at world chase tag <laughs> it's such an awesome event but uh, if you yeah. tell me the premise of it I'm just like what, is that, what are you talking about <laughs> <laughs> that sounds ridiculous yeah yeah oh man that's a good analogy fuck but it's actually great fun and the atmosphere is is roaring it's uh and obviously it gets a lot of like the parkour community together in London, a lot of people that you don't see mm. that regularly. And then we'll all socialize afterwards and then train the next day. So it's, it's, it's a great event. It's a great event. And, and if, I think a so. lot of people like it. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. I mean, there's that incredible clip of people. What's it called? So are you familiar with the British TV show Gogglebox? No. Uh, okay. So this is a TV show where you watch people watching TV Sounds terrible, but we'll keep going. <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny because I, I can imagine, and there's a stand-up comedian that mentions it, it probably makes some people upset in their own household because obviously the families or the couples that are watching the TV on Gogglebox, they're obviously quite entertaining people within their room, sure. their living room or whatever. And then you might get upset that your dynamic with your family or your partner <laughs> isn't actually quite as entertaining. <laughs> Oh, well, what can you do? But yeah, there's a clip of people watching World Chase Tag uh, on Gogglebox. And it's the scene where, um, uh, I mean, I'm, I feel bad for the guy, but he, he really, this kid threw toys out of the pr- And he like kicked the bear, started crying. And, and I think Callum posted it. Oh, God, I shouldn't have said that. Uh, <laughs> it was posted on a, like a spoof Instagram page. Oh, really? Damn, I uh, saw you cut out a little bit, but it sounds like someone had just what? They eat shit and started crying or they'd fallen down? Well, they, they got tagged and uh, maybe it was in the final. I can't remember. Uh, yeah. Um, me and Joe Scanger were outside. <laughs> we'd already we'd already been knocked out. So yeah, I think it was the final. We'd already been knocked out. We were outside having a beer and we sort of half saw what happened and then sort of started slating him quite loudly and laughing. So that he was very close to us at the time. <laughs> Hopefully his English wasn't that good. He was French, but... Uh, what can you do? I mean, it's his fault. You don't need it's such an overreaction. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, lesson learned, hopefully. Mm. I think we've all done. I mean, I've been there. I've overreacted to, to competition. But yeah, I mean, if it gets people if it gets people together, if there's money involved, if it's a way that Joe and you can earn some money so you can focus on training or buy a camera, it's good for us. But I don't want yeah, it to be. Yeah, that's true. We've that's already true. been besmirched. Like our whole reputation is already, in America at least, it's been trashed by the whole office thing so i mean oh, it's God, all uphill yeah. from here oh, it's, no. it's all or all downhill however you look at it but it's all like we've already gotten over the worst as far as i the can thing tell is, so what i've figured out recently right mm-hmm. i think anyway is parkour is only cool if you're pretty damn good at it <laughs> otherwise otherwise it's super lame <laughs> which, is, which, 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 is, which is not fair because one where do you start mm-hmm like, do you know what I mean, like everyone was terrible when they first began. You don't just pick it up. Yeah. Um, obviously, some people might be more natural, naturally gifted than others. Um, mm. 
but yeah, where do you, where do where do you start? And also, it's it's unfair. Skateboarding is cool. Just walking down the street holding a skateboard is kind of cool. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah, if you're it's riding it, you don't look. If you look comfortable and you're just rolling, because you're rolling, you're posing. Yeah. You're like on a you're like a little statue cruising down the street. Where but for us, it's like time, every move. If you have any biomechanical, if your body or your you know your skeleton is not arranged, your posture's off. You look you look bad already. And even if you do something really cool, you can look bad doing it if you don't have the right posture or the, or the right style, like me. Yeah, yeah, but skateboarding is quite stylish, I guess. I mean, I'm joking mostly. It's yeah, being of course, cool of course. is not important. No. It's um, achieving progress is what's important. Yeah. Go, going out one day and trying a jump and then going out a week later and being able to do it. And then that just goes on and on and on. That's all you're doing. Yeah, exactly. But it's very rewarding. And then you find different varieties. So you swing and then you swing to this thing and you don't make it. And then the next week you swing and you make it. And that's very satisfying. And then you start working on form and you land things better than you did last time. Your posture, which is very good for your body as well. So that has more than one benefit. Mm. But like your movements have to feel good. Mm -hmm. It's one thing I've learned, I think because I don't do much tricking or flips as much. I've started practicing more recently. But it's weird the aesthetics of movement because like I'll know when my parkour's off and it will look you can you can see that the technique was bad mm. or the technique was flawed in what I did. But with flips, I always think the technique's bad and then I, when, I, when, I, when I watch it back, it always looks fine. <laughs> and I don't know if that's because I'm I'm less familiar with somersaults or something. Yeah, probably. It probably just you haven't been able to to tune in to what you're doing right or wrong yet. Yeah, my spatial awareness isn't yeah. good That's, enough. Or when, my when, muscle memory is not there. I'm not too sure. When you're making this, this, these like last send off videos, like what kind of challenges attract? Like, is is the same kind of challenge that was interesting to you before? Like, when you're making progress, is it the same kind of progress? Obviously, you, you you've expanded yourself in swinging in different challenges, but is there any kind of through line? To, you know, for me, for instance, I think. What, what what attracts me the most to something is if I really haven't seen it before, if I've never seen anyone do it before. And it's not necessarily about being first. It's just about being like able to invent a something that I, I didn't, I wasn't able to copycat. So it feels like it's more original or more my own. Okay. I mean, I think I have to make an annoying comparison quickly. Please. The difference between, obviously we're all free runners and we all do parkour. Uh -huh. That's the truth of it. Yeah. But I do a lot more parkour than free running. Mm -hmm. And I think what you're talking about in creating something new, um, unless it's a new move within an urban environment, like a new combination of moves, that's what I'm trying to achieve. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think the staple for a clip to be in these videos is that if, say, if it's just one move, it has to be very tough either either physically incredibly demanding or physically and psychologically relatively demanding mm -hmm. or if 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 none of the pieces are that big should we say then there need to be a few of them and it yeah, needs yeah. to be done very well and ideally a bit of high elements to it mm -hmm. like a nice i think a nice some of them will be actual sort of what parkour is supposed to be like <laughs> getting down getting down like a stair set really quickly yeah yeah uh never actually efficiently because sometimes i like just joke in my head that the the fastest and most effective way of going over most of the obstacles we train on is actually really boring and just loads of impact mm -hmm. um <laughs> yeah i don't know i mean the bristol list again i'm a dreamer so i might not tick off all of them um, because there's obviously when you go out training, there's always something you're like, Oh, I'd be so cool to do that. And then that, and then that, mm. and the third bit's a bit ridiculous. Maybe the third bit's not going to happen. <laughs> you see what I mean? Yeah. But you got to aim high. But, yeah, exactly. I've got to aim high. A friend of mine, Eli had a go at me yesterday cause I posted this jump and he was like, well, why don't you save it? Cause that, that's sick. That could go in the video. I was like, it's not good enough. Obviously nothing on curbs, nothing at ground level. Yeah. Um, yeah, strides, pyres, big running jumps, cat passes, standard boring stuff, nothing new, sorry. 
just fundamentals pushed to their limit in in a way sounds like yeah which yeah, i, I really like and i mean some, <clears throat> and then some of it some of it nicely combined yes and yeah when i'm saying like new i know that like it almost is never new it might be new to me and it, it's rarely new to the sport or whatever but even then it's it's just another variation of just like height another parameter taken a little bit further than i've seen it it's not like this new move but i think that yeah. what you're doing is yeah you're just trying to you're trying to push your capacity to its limit you're trying to be like okay if i have to think about the height and the the distances and now introducing a slightly technical thing you know it's like all right i'm, I'm yeah. going on poles instead of walls whatever it is more precision more yeah, exactly. just more of it everything needs to be technically physically and mentally demanding and ideally there needs to be not too much room for error either because that always makes it more gangster yes mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, which is why that's what i've been working on quite a bit at the moment is getting over the i'm one of these people i don't know do you know who ben jenks is yes of course Benjamin Jenkins, absolute yeah, yeah. legend absolute legend um, lives in la now in fact we were going to visit him weren't we we were yeah 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 years back um it will happen eventually um but he we used to train and he had a very good mental sort of tactic and maybe hendo is good at this too but i'm the kind of person annoyingly if i'm scared of something i'll put 60 percent in the first try mm. whereas ben would put ben would put 100 in because mm. that's the safest option yeah um so i'm trying to get past that because there are a few jumps <laughs> that i want to do in bristol that if i don't put 90 95 percent in first try my ankle is going to be done <laughs> not not forever i won't yeah, break yeah. it but i yeah. mean if i if i bounce off it badly or crane yeah that, that's just not an option yeah um so i'm very happy i did a running rail precision i posted it on instagram i don't know if you've seen it mm -hmm. yesterday i saw it which because it's it's to a rail and there's nothing underneath this rail so i had my factor. first attempt had to be a bounce off so that was very good for my brain yes to put like a high percentage. I don't think it was anywhere near 90 though, but. I know exactly what you're practice. talking about. Yeah, that that ability. I mean, yeah, I wrote, a, I, I wrote and I have not yet published because I'm, uh, you know, I wrote a whole article on that, trying to just cultivate that ability to once you'd make the decision to do something, like you said, it's the safest option, but it's a real yeah, big struggle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a real big struggle to get convince your mind that. I was trying to flip precision yesterday yeah, and I don't do flip precisions very often, but I think and for, I've done one. And for me, yeah, <laughs> I know <laughs> that if I jump up and I wait and I look at the obstacle before I start rotating over my head or feel like I'm rotating, I'm already rotating, but before I really tuck and go blind, that's the safest thing because I can be like, I'm going to it. Yes, there yeah, it is, yeah. and then I land perfectly on it. But I freak out when it's actually over, you know, danger. Yeah, and, and then you give up on the rotation. Uh, I mean, I just, you know, an ankle thing yesterday, even though I've, I threw a couple of good ones, but it's just not, it's not cemented. The, build, the ability to be like, I know what the safest option is and, and execute at that level. But yeah, that's a I really good thing. Time, it's a really good thing to, to cultivate. Well, the first and only time I tried a double back from a tumble. Oh, yeah. I was chilling. <laughs> <laughs> I barely ran into it. I didn't focus on the technique and then obviously I barely tucked. I was like quite open, like I could barely grab my knees and I landed straight on my head, obviously. Oh my God. For goodness sake. Instead of like doing like a really powerful round off flick and then just knees to your shoulders, just hold it and hope <laughs> and over rotate the bastard. <laughs> That's the best way of doing it. Oh, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh no, don't, sorry. Are you good? I thought that was the message about furlough. I'm hopefully getting some money by the government through the restaurant I was working at. Oh yeah. Yeah. Hopefully I hope you get all the money that you need, Betty. Um, what was, what I wanted to ask about too is okay. You talked about old school. We talked about some of this and I'd mentioned to you, like obviously America and American free running kind of is the butt of the joke sometimes when it comes to just what's what, 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 what we miss. What are we missing out here? Um, Obviously, I'll do disclaimers. No one offended and all that, you know, nonsense. Yeah, yeah exactly. And I'm, we're not generalizing because yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. sure across the U.S. there's a different. I mean, at the end of the day, the reason I don't think that uh, to anyone that is 
of reasonable intelligence, forgive me for saying, Ali Law can't actually put a damper on my reputation mm. just because we both do parkour in someone's eyes. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. I do what I do. I practice what I want. Most people should be able to understand that. Um, to assume that because one person broke some tiles, everyone that does parkour is a vandal <laughs> is as it's the same ignorance as racism. Yeah. Not nearly as bad, but it's the same fallacy and like, logic and yeah, exactly. Um, or as nationalism or as like you're put, you're, you're putting people in a box that they aren't actually. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, it makes perfect sense. And no, I love they're not all in that. The, the box you're putting them in, they're not all in that just because they all do this sport. It's a heuristic, right? That... You're like, Oh, they're all like that. But yeah, it's, it's your problem. And I have a, I, yeah. I agree. Wholeheartedly. So I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna say that all Americans are making this mistake or whatever. No, of course not. But if you're asking my opinion of a difference between say British parkour and American parkour, mm. then I would say that they need to all go outside. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I think. Yeah. 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 Go outside, hit your shins a few times. Um, and yeah, do do some more jumps maybe. But I, I don't know. Again, the thing is, my opinion isn't that valid, sadly, because again, I live under a rock. Mm. Um, I watch, obviously, um, oh, I want to say his actual name because I don't like nicknames. What's his actual name? Um, What's his nickname? I might be able to Daryl Stingley. Oh, Stingley, yeah. His video. I really like the way he moves. Yeah, he's, he's got beautiful style. Beautiful style for um, sure. Very elegant. Um, but it's I've, I don't think I've seen him do a jump outside personally. <laughs> I'm sure he has, but I've just seen and and it's also I've only seen footage of him in the same gym. Yeah, yeah. It's uh no, I have the same I have the same take on it. I guess you could say it's not a, it's not a problem. I don't really doesn't bother me. And other than the fact that I, I like more training partners to come outside with me because that's what I'm interested in maybe. But I feel I you. Think potentially, I feel you. go I, on. Well, I think it could relate even to the fact that you were talking about earlier where it's like you're not, it's not very, it's not very cool until you're really good at it or quite good at it. You know, it doesn't really, you have to build a lot of confidence and I don't know if it's a different culture here where Americans are more, um, worried about what people think of them or maybe we ridicule each other harder for being weird in public or wow, if it do, has do you think do you think that i, I did not consider i don't that know being if that, an actual factor i don't think it is i just it's a theory so it's, it's a hypothesis it's, it's a hypothesis and you know obviously we have this big broad you know america's basically as big as europe you know or bigger um in terms of the communities being really spread out so you have to oh, you have to there seems to be like the gyms are often the glue that keep a community even like together. Cause otherwise, you know, where are we going to go? It's hard to get people to meet up. Everyone lives too far apart. I don't know what it is. There's something about it, but we everyone do get does stuck. live a lot, a lot further apart. We do get stuck there and it's really hard sometimes to find, um, you know, people that they get, they, they get their comfort in the gym. They get their comfort with, you know, not having to deal with the embarrassment on top of everything else that they're learning of being in public because it's a so, safe environment, but then they get trapped there and then they start not feeling comfortable taking it to non-purpose built obstacles and, and they don't learn the things that they also need to learn to go outside, which is like checking surfaces, understanding different angles uh, and being able to assess distances without, you know, measuring tape or anything like this. Well, I think in my opinion, again, which I don't think anyone should assume is actually valid. Um, <laughs> They're missing. It, well, they're not missing out. Sorry, they're, it's just there's a there's a slight difference. And when you talk about the creativity of say inventing a new trick or whatever, like Danny did the Congainer, blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. um, I think I do think training in a gym breeds a different sense of creativity, because one of the most valuable things for me in parkour is exploring the urban environment and finding new spots or challenges. So like. You got spots that you train at, but there's also loads of places where there's one or two moves that you want to do. Um, and so the creativity is sort of finding a location and then finding a challenge that you like the idea of solving on whatever obstacles are available. Mm. Whereas I think in a gym, you get a bit more, you're, because everything's the same and you've been to that gym loads of times, it's all the same, but you have to be more creative with your ways of movement. Mm as opposed to what you're moving on, I think.
Yeah, yeah, true. You I see what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's a different kind and of that, fight. That, that, it's a different opponent that you're getting into. To like not yeah, that. and I do think, I do think potentially that exists within the difference between the old school and the new school. Okay. And I personally think it's a result of uh, Red Bull Art of Motion. That's what I think. Oh, go on. Because, so before Red Bull Art of Motion, you went out and most obviously I think. If we're talking before Red Bull Art of Motion, there were no parkour gyms in the entire world, right? Mm -hmm. Pretty sure that's true. Um, and people went out and they found challenges and obstacles or whatever and combinations. Um, and obviously the sport progressed. So first, like when I started training, people were doing a lot of wall pops. Um, I think like Kong Vault Precisions and Kong Vault to Cats were like relatively new, I was assuming. Mm. Um, it was lots of vaults to rolls and things like that. That was like the extent of parkour. <laughs> And then obviously progressed. You had combinations of vaults to precisions and things like that. People doing long runs, lots of interesting climbing from people like Teghead. Um, but still no gyms and still this idea of not A to B as fast as possible, but like, can I get from here to there only using these obstacles? Mm -hmm. Or can I get over that and then do that and get up that wall, blah, blah, blah. That was the sort of methodology for training. And there was ever slightly a linear approach to it. And then challenges like Kong Precisions and things. But then came Art of Motion and you had to perform for, I don't know, maybe 60 seconds. Ah, uh, yeah. On a limited structure. So you're not doing a 60 second line, are you, over loads of obstacles? <laughs> so you kind of have to get a bit creative and like do... I, I always, I, I joke and embellish that a lot of the runs that people do are not harder, that they can, are not made more complicated by combining all the movements if that makes sense yeah but i think i am just i'm being a dick it's not actually <laughs> true it probably is a lot harder to do the, the combination of these moves but it is definitely more obvious a challenge to say do say we're, we're at imax one and you're doing i don't know for example yeah let's say I posted this as an idea. Hopefully Toby's going to do it. It'll be incredible. I saw. Dive Kong in the big, dive Kong the big block and then double the next two. Mm. Now those two, those two moves separate. The <laughs> dive Kong's not that bad. The double, I reckon Toby's probably got hands down, but combining the two of them with just a gallop in the middle Oof. makes it so much harder. <laughs> Whereas doing like a cart seven and then having a little run up, and jumping onto a bar and doing a float up and then doing like giants to double dismount or whatever. Those two moves are just as hard together as they are separate. Yeah. Obviously there's the endurance side of things, but I see what you mean. Yeah. I think we've, we've still not gotten through that awkward stage. I think there was an awkward stage where we're taking big moves and combining them across like no real transitionary challenge. Like you're saying you may as well just walked over there. If you're going to roll on flat ground or something like that's inconsequential, like people will do in competition, which is take yeah, like a, exactly. take it like an arbitrary I mean, roll or, or an arbitrary. Cause they, cause that to them, that's less, that's more aesthetically pleasing than taking a step, but it's, it's the same to me. And I think I agree and with it, you. And it's a, it's a bit, um, <clears throat> Oh crap. I was thinking, so I lost, I lost what I was about to say. So I really think of further down the line, but, if you like say you have a long run up between moves in a parkour line mm. or a parkour run or whatever, it makes it's it, you can still you can do it really fast and it looks good, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. But you're not trying to really quickly get from this to that move and then to that move mm. necessarily, are you? It's more about doing it smoothly and it is more about the aesthetic and how interesting the movements are as opposed to how fast and like smooth. It's still about being smooth. Yeah, I, I, I'm trying to explain this I see well. what you mean, though. Yeah, now I have the same issues. I mean, I don't care. Like, <clears throat> whatever. Our opinions don't matter, but it's just what I'm interested in. What we're seeing me both be interested in is just not circular. If you're going to run at something, why would you then turn around and run back? I, like, I just want it to make sense. That's all sometimes. I just want it to I make mean, sense. If, if, if there <clears> are I would minimal say, steps between, mm -hmm. then, then, then it is kind of awesome. Oh yeah. Well, no, I'm, I, again, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not saying it's bad or anything. I'm just saying that that potentially is a difference between America and 
Uh, well, I mean, a lot of English people train like that as well. I think that also that it's changing. Like we've, uh, what I said was we were in the transitionary state. When you see like this year's Art of Motion candidates and people like Ed Scott and Dee Dee and uh, Nate Weston and all these like top players in that in that world where mm. they're kind of no no one really takes unnecessary weird things at, at the, in the podium level anymore. There's probably a little bit of that going on still here and there, but. When, with those guys, it's like they're doing parkour. They're they're still adhering to the kind of uh, criteria that you're putting forth, but also doing you know double flips and and wild twists and things that it does kind of like make it linked in a way that each of them is it's still harder together than than separately. I think I yeah. think we're entering I that mean, already. It's, it's it's I don't know. Make a comparison to sort of music taste or whatever. It's just it's just how I grew up. Yeah, yeah. That's what I like. That's what I respect, and that's what I train. And just because I don't respect the way that other people move, it doesn't mean it's not impressive. It doesn't mean that I don't like watching it either. Mm. It's just it's just it's I don't know. It's just it's sort of out of my remit or whatever. <laughs> um, do you do you? Do you think that the there will be like some new high water marks kind of set for for what people think is possible after these videos of you come out? Because obviously, you know, I know I'm asking you to be a little bit uh, less than humble here, but I'm ask, but you've 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 had an impact on the sport, like you've said, like peop, you've you've given people ideas that they probably wouldn't have had, or like paved a blazed a trail for what's possible in the in the sport. Is that something that you think will continue to be pushed, you know, with this, with these videos? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure <coughs> that what you're talking about can happen exponentially, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like there were certain revelations and different movements that were not, not invented or anything sort of discovered and then built up on and becoming more and more possible. Like for example, the the, the Kong Kong's precision, mm -hmm. and then they got bigger, and they, and they're still they're getting they're getting further and lower. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, like the the IMAX cat precision that Kai did, for example. Oh yeah. That obviously quite a few people have done now, and please everyone listening, you have to see the clip of the French dude who accidentally cleared the wall. <laughs> oh really? Oh, you have to send it so to he me. Basically, I didn't know stuck it. the floor past that wall. <laughs> um, but we 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 used to joke about that. Yeah. Maybe 12 years ago, should we say? I'm guessing. But um, it was a joke. Like, we'd say, oh, imagine if someone did that. But really, in our head, we were like, that is the most insane thing ever. But it's... I, I do think it's mainly... Say when you're training and you and a couple of friends, you're all trying a challenge. Once one of them does it, normally the other two get it. Mm -hmm. Why is that? It's It's something about our minds... We've seen that another human has done it, so that makes it so much easier for us to do it. Yeah. That's why I am i am a man of thinking that being the first to do something is a very... that They get credit for that. Whoever done it should get some credit for that. Yeah, of Like course. David Bell doing manpower. Imagine. <laughs> yeah, oh my God, right? Whew. Like now people... Get, like, yeah, whoever is the first to step to any challenge, I agree. They deserve credit for it because... There's so much like I've ridden people's coattails through a challenge and I know it was 10 times easier than if I, I would, I wouldn't have done it without them, you know, so many times. Yeah. Yeah. hundred yeah, yeah. percent. Breaking the challenge is very important and it requires good mental strength. Um, it's good, but yeah. So the, let's say becoming of people practicing different types of movements. There's only so many, I think, mm. um, I mean, maybe potentially, I don't, I'd, I'd, I'm not looking to, with these videos, change the way people train at all. But obviously, again, it's just the same because I grew up the way I train. Mm. And now when I watch videos, I don't think as many people train that way. Mm. Sort of mostly jump orientated. Mm. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I, I want to call it old school parkour, really. Yeah. Like, um, Though a lot of people do, I guess they just add in, there's a lot more flips going on and things like that. And a lot more creative types of movement as opposed to big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like big. 
I like I'm a fan big. of big. I'm a fan of big. I'm a, I'm a, I like I'm a big, fan of big. I call it big game hunting now. I'm looking for like terrain that is like insane terrain is what they call it or in some other disciplines and stuff is just like just can we increase the scale like from IMAX the big IMAX down Kong Pri that's just like a new scale of challenge and like you said I don't know that it actually gets exponentially larger through the generations because human body can only take so much but I like putting it out there and just showing people well you could also yeah try this I mean like take Verky for example he did oh my I mean, god he was in a gym which I think again in my mind that always that always just takes off a couple of points yeah um because it's a gym even though what he did it on was all solid mm -hmm. except for the landing at the end but he did it he did a con gainer to precision man <laughs> <laughs> what yeah <laughs> yeah Absolutely. Again, again, something we joked about back. We probably said Robert De Niro did it because there was a short phase where everyone, if you if you saw something that was not humanly possible, you'd say that Robert De Niro had done it. Yeah, Robert De Niro. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I'm not sure. I mean, like I, I enjoy parkour. I enjoy the practice of it. I enjoy progressing because it's it's rewarding, uh, and it's also I think as far as hobbies go, I think it's very good for your body as well yeah um, but it is just a hobby and as much as i care about like i said the community being self-sustaining and all the friends that i've made i don't really care how people do it or why they do it i just if they do something gangster i, w I would enjoy watching it happen and yeah like you said breaking things is always interesting especially in iconic spots like mm. someone doing something new at, something new at imax it's quite impressive, isn't it? Because people have been training there for years. Yeah, of course. No, I'm a big fan of that as well. And I think that it goes back again to that group mentality. It's just, I don't, I don't like to, I don't like that. I don't know how you balance or that's the last, last, one of the last things I wanted to make sure we talk about, which is, you know, you've always said like, you don't really even pay that much attention to you live under a rock. You're, you're not like focused on producing content and yet you've become one of the more influential figures in the sport. I think it's something a lot of people can pick up on and maybe realize that it'll help them contribute in not in parkour. Like it shouldn't maybe be the goal, but just as a human being more is just living a more balanced lifestyle, you know? And, uh, yeah. do you have any thoughts on that? And just, and just what you see is like, maybe what's given you the ability to, to contribute so much to the sport, but not really take it that seriously at the same time. I don't know. I, th I think balance is important. And I do think, and this is potentially a bit harsh of me, especially the younger ones, <laughs> even some of the older ones. I think a lot of people, like obviously there's the, there's the joke, like the hashtag PK for life. But I think some people do get too heavily involved in parkour and the community to the point where I don't think they actually live in the real world that I live in mm -hmm. sometimes. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of them do, but I feel like a lot of them don't. Um, and then the worst ones will end up posting sort of pseudo spiritual bullshit on Facebook, for example. And I'll just be like, oh, oh God, because society exists. OK, and I think a lot of parkour people potentially, especially if they're young, like everyone was against society when they were young. I was a Marxist when I was 15, for Christ's sake. Yeah, but I'm not anymore <laughs> because I've grown up and I've appreciated that society exists. And it's very complicated. So you should educate yourself to exist well in it, basically. It's, it's to your own advantage. You can't try and deny it. Mm. That's just dumb. That's only going to screw you over. You've got to accept it and become a part of it. That's, that's what I'm trying to do, basically. And I think um, a lot of parkour people should, because as much as obviously when I was 18, I was flying around the world and making some money because of parkour, it still didn't get me anywhere. Mm. Um, and I don't think it's going to get anyone anywhere, to be perfectly honest with you. Stora are successful bloggers. They're not successful parkour athletes. That's the way I see it. Mm. Maybe there's a, there's an anomaly, I think, which is Dom Tomato. <laughs> I think he could be the only parkour practitioner <laughs> that is going to make a living out of it. But again, how long is that going to last? Yeah. What's, he, what's he going to do when he can't train anymore? Is he going to become a coach? Because you can't, you can't become a parkour choreographer 
fair enough, you could be a stunt man, and then when your body's done, you could be a stunt choreographer. Cool, there's a line. Yeah, yeah. But you're always going to be earning money and a salary and achieving things within your field or your career or whatever. Whereas even someone like Dom, is he going to be, like, where's it going to taper off? Is he going to be successful through parkour for his entire life? We don't know. Is he yeah. going to have to become a model or some sort of other influencer? <laughs> Yeah. I don't know. I mean, when, when I was young, and I'm assuming, uh, I'd love to see the stats. I'm guessing most of pop, most parkour practitioners are probably sub-18, right? Oh, Worldwide. I'm sure. Worldwide, for sure, I'd say. Yeah. It's a young man's and game. I think, I'm guessing sort of... Young, young person's game, as, I should as, say. As the, age, as, the, as the age goes up, the numbers of people practicing goes down. Yeah. So... I mean, I wasn't thinking about these things when I was that when I was ten years ago, for example, unfortunately. But some people are, and I think they should. And yeah, parkour's a hobby, and it's fun. But don't don't. I mean, this 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 one's a bit harsh. But I'm pretty sure there are some people I know that do parkour, and they don't have any friends outside of parkour, really. Mm. And I think that's a bit that's a bit sad. Yeah. You know what I mean, how many rock climbers you know that only hang out with rock climbers? Is that not? Do footballers only hang out with footballers? No, they don't. <laughs> no. Nah. No. Nah. Well, and I think what you're saying too is like, it's so, I mean, I, I got too deep. I know I got too deep in parkour. Like the, the, what you're saying, that happened to me where I was like, I couldn't see reality even. I was a little bit delusional yeah. about what the, what the world looked like because I was, I was like, no, it's going to be like this. But <laughs> that's one of the things that it's, it, it can be devastating when you do get too deep, when you start to realize that it's not that w the way you thought it was and it's not what it is. And by having a life outside of parkour, which luckily for me, I never got too so deep because I already came into parkour at the age of 21. So I was already developed in a lot of ways. And so I had friends and I had a life and I know I'd always kind of like kept it at enough of a distance that, you know, I didn't lose myself completely, but that is necessary mm -hmm. to see the reality that you're talking about that you live in i'd say because yeah, that can well, actually think, give you if the, if you actually understand what where parkour really fits how important it is not just to you but to the world then you can actually make it bigger if you really want to and know what's required of that and not just think that you know well i think it's it's crucial to be aware of everything ideally right yeah yeah, yeah, the more that's, aware. That's, that, that's what you want. You want to, to, to live in the world and know what's going on. Like, know what... Every every part of society's infrastructure and superstructure, you want to... I'm not saying I do. I'm just saying you want, you want to open yourself to knowing as much as you can. And here's an idea, for example, if you're one of these parkour people that gets really deep into it, loves it, only hangs out with parkour people, all your social media is parkour related or whatever you're you're narrowing your awareness of different types of people i mean it's the same way that there are theories i don't know if they're true or not i haven't looked into them but there's all this talk about because of cambridge analytica and facebook that's sort of how trump got into power because of the algorithms i mean it even happened say take brexit for example because mm -hmm. everyone i knew was voting remain mm -hmm. when i woke up the next morning i was absolutely baffled and shocked Hmm. that we were leaving the eu mm -hmm. because i only had a pool of people it's 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 good to take in different people's opinions mm. and let's say then if we take into account the fact that parkour is not exactly a career driven sport or hobby and if you if it's not just a hobby or it becomes your life and you're only hanging around with people that are doing the same thing you're not going to be aware of the others that are actually working hard on something else and getting degrees and then moving into well-paid jobs afterwards you don't even know that those people exist, so you can't be inspired <laughs> by them, can you? Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Hopefully your parents are telling you, giving you some, but like no one actually listens to their parents at that age much, do they? I no. didn't. Or my grandparents. Um, so you're, you're, almost, you're almost trapping yourself in that, in that path of life, if that makes sense. No, totally. Yeah, you, it's kind of like a, yeah, it's a, it's a, Willful, willful ignorance is what people sometimes use the phrase. If, mm. You know, it's a, re a rejection of of what's outside of what you want, and it's very counterintuitive to what you probably started parkour with, and what makes parkour so satisfying and enjoyable is that it pushes you outside your comfort zone. You see progress, 
Um, but like you said, that is, that's a very good point. Well, well put. <laughs> It is. It's counterintuitive to yeah. be so narrowly involved just in that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I found that it gives me a lot more pleasure to train when I realize where it really fits. You know, too. It it can be. It, yeah. I think it's very beneficial to push yourself super hard if you really if it means a lot to you. But it's when it doesn't mean a lot to you anymore, um, don't make it mean a lot to you. Find what means something yeah. to you. Yeah. No, exactly. Don't 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 force it. But, and um, I don't know. I don't know. It's strange because, like I said earlier, it's, it's weird because, like, the idea of filming a really awesome or dope video is very inspiring to me. But the idea of, say, training for a competition is not the same way that trying to be, let's say, more broadly talented. So trying to learn moves so that I have. Mm. like so that I can cover all spectrums of the sport but not actually for me that's not inspiring either mm. <laughs> it's just weird how this, how this how this thing works yeah yeah I guess some people really want to diversify within a very narrow thing and you're like I want to specify in parkour and then diversify in life you know yeah, everyone kind of exactly, chooses exactly. what they do but uh like you say I think it's it's just important to be aware of what because it can help inform, it can help make your opinion, even though you live under a rock, that might give your opinion more validity, not less, when it comes to parkour, depending on yes. how. Because you can be so, so blinded by, by your own delusion. And that delusion is kind of important sometimes. I think that's what keeps the sport growing in some ways, is people being delusional about it, people being optimistic and hopeful about where it will go. We need that at the same time. You know, if we don't have yeah, that, then I it mean, doesn't go anywhere. But... <clears throat> but you don't want to see athletes, you know, parkour practitioners, people falling out of the sport, um, already struggling with, with coming to terms with that and then struggling on top of it with everyone shitting on them for, for not being involved anymore. We should all understand each other as individuals, you know? Yeah. And, yeah, uh, exactly. and see that parkour people don't really exist. People exist and parkour exists. But a parkour yeah, person exactly. is, is something that you've whoa, invented whoa, whoa. in your head. One second, my laptop's just decided. Oh, it's gangster time now. What do we got? <laughs> it's uh, Smith and Wesson. <laughs> Smith and Wesson. Woo. Big up gangster rap. Yes. Oh, yeah. I think it's just... music was a good thing with the parkour community as well. The music used in videos. Mm hmm. Um, obviously I'm just biased but I think music and videos was better 10 years ago yeah now everything was better 10 years ago once you start to get older I think I mean potentially that's <laughs> we're getting, because we're, music, we're becoming old I th men I think, we're becoming yeah, old exactly. men is what's happening Phil yeah. you I and just, I are I becoming old we decided to abandon our our uh, you know whatever whatever we want to leave no, exactly. behind we're we get, want to live old. and yeah. the truth of it is it's actually that music was better 10 years ago <laughs> <laughs> yeah, every, yeah. Every, everything was better 10 years ago basically well it's just like that what was like do? it's the same as what we were talking about with challenges music was being they're, they're breaking the challenges in music and then a lot of it is derivative after that and that's okay but to do something truly inventive it's like music is like a fucking IMAX spot that's been around for the beginning of time so to do something truly original in music is really hard to do. It's just generally is better done by people in the past or it's already happened. Yeah. Yeah. No, not wrong. Not wrong. So we'll see. And, and I don't know. I mean, and, and again, again, music is, is, is incredibly because there's, there's, there's pretty much no objectivity when it comes to it. No. Apart yeah. from element of rhythm, I guess. Um, so it's, it's all, it's all opinion. That's why that's one of the beautiful things about it. Hmm. And there's so much of it. I can't wait nice. for I can't wait for these videos to drop though. I mean, again, I think it's we're returning to a little bit of culture. We found out what was unsustainable. We found out we we pushed it to the limit already and now I think we're going to start refining again, you know, as a community. But but yeah, I would I would I would like that. I'm in the same boat. I think boat. also potentially obviously there are a lot of athletes that are focused on it, but I think I don't know. I have this vague idea that the youth training, there's less of a focus on being strong, mm. like and landing things well, and like everything you do, sort of being comfortable. Mm. I don't know. I'm not saying I'm worried about their joints or anything, but 
yeah. for, me, for me and for a lot of people back in my day, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that was a very important part of all our training. Yeah, and and even for you, you probably—I mean, when you take it back even further, it was even more like that, right? When you when you hear about the Yamakaze, I don't, I don't, I know if you've met them or if you know, but yeah, it just seems like it was always more discipline based, and then as things go along, they become more expression and less. It's just it starts from a very almost conservative position, you know, very disciplined, old school. Then it becomes yeah. super free form, practical. super free form. It's the same kind of journey we're talking about as, as young men when we grow up and you're under 18 and you're rebelling. And then it kind of comes full circle again. You're like, nah, I kind of got to fit with the world that exists, the society that exists. I want to be in yeah. it. I don't want to be hiding from it or trying this to escape from it. You're just one it. person. Yeah. And also I'm, I'm not even like... I don't know. I, sometimes I can't stand any notion of these conspiracy theories and things like that. People talking about five G causing Corona because it's just like <laughs> there's there's no anyone anyone who like thinks people are lizards or the Illuminati. Because why are you so pessimistic? Mm. Like unless you just, unless you just smoked a ridiculous amount of weed and you're really paranoid. But <laughs> why would you think that the entire world <laughs> is out to get you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, of course there are people in board meetings there are CEOs of companies sitting there trying to figure out how they can have more money and you can have less yeah. that exists yes. they're not all in cahoots <laughs> yeah. they don't all work they don't together. have to be right it's just and, it's... and I think people slate politicians a lot whereas I bet it's very hard I'm sure especially once you're sort of high up not quite like prime minister or president it's your options are probably quite thin to be honest with you, I doubt they've just like they could be doing this good, but instead they're just screwing us all over. It's not true. I think it's a very complex system, which I don't understand very well. Yeah, um, no, it's super complex, and that's why it's always good to be more aware. I mean, I like it when I hear about this shit because it gives me something new to think about. If someone's that crazy that they think whatever five G causes Corona or whatever, it doesn't necessarily mean that it probably means that they're crazy. But what it also means is for me, it's like all right, maybe there's a new edge that I need to investigate in, in, at the same time. Okay, 5G may not ca cause corona. Do you think they get, I, I, I think you're right. I but, think they, they've, th through the internet and through their upbringing, <laughs> they've created this psycho psychological system where they get dopamine for <laughs> accepting the possibility of something ridiculous. And then that's, that's like, that's grown and that's grown and that's become like almost a habit of theirs. Yeah. You see what I mean? Yeah. That's the only, because otherwise they're just so bloody dumb. I don't get it. <laughs> like flat earth people. Do you see what I mean? I think they're just like, they're just like, they just, they feel good about themselves for not just like denying it. It's like they're fucking conspiracy agnostic or something. They're not atheists. Like, mm. fuck you. <laughs> I just. Yeah. Yeah. It's... Sorry. No, no, you're good. You're good. I think it's uh, it's fascinating to me because I don't know. I mean, that's just like what's super weird because like we get we get a lot of parkour athletes, especially really influential ones that kind of go into that into those extreme paths outside the norm, right? Parkour. Well, I think part. I think part of that is, and I mean, there's evidence in like much largely famous people. I don't know if largely is a word, but anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> for example, like, like Michael Jackson went nuts, Eddie Murphy went nuts. Oh, yeah. Fame and recognition is bad for your mental health, 100%. Yeah. It's not normal, and it's because of the internet and because of, do you know what I mean? We, I, I, I can know what's going on in Uganda in quite a lot of detail because of the internet and the news and things like that. And that's very good. That's valuable. That's beneficial, yeah. actually. Um, but being aware of how many people like you or respect you because of what you do and then you've got this crossover which is very annoying and very dumb where people tend to respect people as people because they respect them in their field mm. whereas those two do not cross over there's no bridge do you see what i mean yeah possibly if you're like yeah like a medical professional or a lollipop lady i don't know you're doing a good job do you know what i mean so yeah. you can maybe you can maybe equate that because they're good at that, then they're potentially a good person. I should listen to them and what they have to say, but from parkour to anything else or like, yeah, like music to politics. I made these comparisons in the motors podcast. Mm -hmm. It's just, you can't jump those gaps. It's ridiculous. You can't.
And it should inform you, like you said, like a politician is good at what? Politics. That doesn't mean that he's a bad person, but it certainly doesn't mean that they're even that qualified to talk about anything. But the game of politics is probably, like you said, it's at least as complex as the game of parkour. So to become an expert level politician or somebody who is being, you know, playing in that world successfully means well, that they're it's probably far more complex, far more. Yeah. yeah. It's complex in a very different way. And I would say that it's also a game, you know, it's also something that you get good at. That's not necessarily even the intended. Yeah, uh, of course. Yeah. Yeah. It's cut just, out. Yeah, it's just, it's, everything's Hello? like that. It's very, very complex. I cut out. Can you hear me? I can hear you still. You got this? Hello. We got a fresh, we got a, a skeptical. Oh, there we go. Can you hear me now? Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. But I'm going to pause because I need to pee and I'll probably get another beer. So I'll be back in like. Okay. You do your thing. I'm going to piss break. Here we go. Should I call you back? Uh, no, keep it going. Keep it going. Just leave I'll, it there. I'll, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll I'm, chop I'm it up. I'm just embarrassed because basically what I've done is I've, last time I changed my bedding, I didn't <laughs> wash the other bedding. So I've washed my bedding and it's hanging. And so like, you can see that I'm just on some like empty, empty blanket there. So there you go. <laughs> no worries. We'll, I'll be back in a minute. Yeah, do your thing. Oh man, are you gonna come back out to the Americas anytime, ever again? Um, Any intention? For John Reynolds' wedding. Oh really? That's, that's the plan. But um, when's that? Well, I'm assuming. It, I think it was going to be this year, but I'm guessing it's postponed. Uh, that would make sense. Until further notice, sadly. Is he still he's in Colorado Springs, or where is he? I'm not sure. I can't remember. So does that mean you're coming to... I mean, I, I assume he still lives here in Colorado. Does that mean you're coming to Colorado? Yeah, I think they're both from Colorado, so I'm sure it would be in Colorado. Yes. That's what I'm talking about, dude. That's a good... That's a, I was yeah. way better than the answer I was expecting. I thought maybe a no, maybe, yeah. a, maybe a New York or an LA, but you're coming to my home? No, never LA. Really. I don't like... I guess I'd have to go to LA because I'd have to see Jenks if I'm in America. I mean, if I go to America, I'll go to LA. Maybe not New York. I'd like to go to New York again. Um, I'd like to go to Boston again, but I've 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 got no reason to go to America really, mm. to be honest with you, except for John's wedding. <laughs> so other, other than that, it would be it would be you're right. It would be a holiday where I'd probably go to a couple of states, and see old friends and train a little bit, but mostly just talk about life. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean, so you and John are quite close then, huh? Yeah, we still speak. I actually, I, I, I met him in London. Ooh. Now this is a hard one to determine. I'm not sure. I think was it? It might have been the end of last summer. Hmm. Um, him and his fiance. In fact, we went on a double date, which was quite funny because it was quite awkward. <laughs> It was like they were like they were getting married, and I was like had just started dating this girl. Oh yeah. Anyway, yeah. So are you still awkward. dating her? But um, huh? You guys still dating? No, 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 no. Oh. That did not last long. Uh, um, single man right now. Single bachelor single corona. studying corona. Huh? Yeah. Get no you. one's a bachelor right now. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> um, no, yeah. Sadly, single, lonely. Yeah, I really asked someone out on a walk the other day because I'm that I'm that desperate. <laughs> Just be like, do you want to do you want to sit by a tree one day and have some sandwiches? Like, you, wanna... <laughs> you sit on that side, I'll sit on the this side. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, normally I might have approached you at a bar, but they don't exist anymore, so mm. it's got to happen this way. I'm eventually. I'm, I'm going to end up asking someone out in Aldi. What's that? supermarket oh <laughs> they say that's a great place they say that's a that's one of the hot spots really i think people dress up man they dress up to go to the grocery store they want to they a lot of people are that they're looking for attention even if they don't actually want to <laughs> well, meet somebody huh i think because of corona people get people get really fancy dressed oh, to go to the i think extra because of actually maybe less because of corona because everyone's just kind of like well, my face is behind a mask now they can't even see me anyways but i think before corona and after corona people are he people are what i call it is plumage they put on their their best <laughs> suit they put on their best suit and they do their hair and they do their makeup whatever they're doing because 
there's a lot of sexual energy floating around in the grocery store. A lot of strangers. Oh, you, you reckon, never know you who it's mating season after. Oh after yeah, Corona. man, it's springtime. We're we're, <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna see some people <laughs> just strutting around those aisles. Awesome. Thing is, I'll be honest with you. I've never. I, I don't think. And it's funny. There's a, there's a comedian who makes this comparison, but to ask someone out in the middle of the day that you've never met before, how do you? That's. <laughs> it, I don't know. For some weird reason, like on a dance floor or at a bar, just seems so much more acceptable to me. Which is stupid, right? It's, it's stupid. It is very stupid. I think it's romanticized in films and stuff. Like, oh, you both re- both reach for the same can of soup. People think but that something's going to happen. It says that about. Uh, the British says that the British like it's, it's like America. He says America. Oh, uh, I I got you still, but I don't know if you still hear me. Yeah, 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 I'm here. I'm here. Okay. My internet should be good. It's working. I think we're. I think we're. I think we're in the clear. We're safe. Yeah. Yeah, but this comedian, he basically jokes about the fact that in England, like no one, you ask someone out in the evening. <laughs> um, whereas, like in Australia and America, they're just like you could be w- walking to go get coffee in the morning and like ask someone out for a date later. It's just, I, he's joking. It's not true, is it? Yeah. But I personally, yeah, I don't think I've, and normally it's like you're with friends and they're with friends and you meet them in that sort of dynamic, not just, you, not just you're, you're by yourself and they're by themselves and you end up talking. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I do know what you're saying. I don't, I don't go to bars that much anymore. I've kind of, uh, See, the fee, for me, I don't know if it's maybe the quality of the bars I was going to or just the way my life is going, what kind of woman I want to be interested in having a relationship with, but I realized that it was not a good place for me to meet girls anymore. It was a good place what, for me to meet you, girls. But you, you only want to date someone that doesn't go to bars. Is that what you're saying? No, no, no. I just I felt like my numbers were um, the kinds of people I was meeting at bars it was just, it was just, it was a good, it was a bad place for, I don't know if it's American culture, but it's not that I wouldn't want them to go to bars. It was that I started not wanting to go to bars and I felt like I was to go there to meet to someone who wants to, like, I would have to meet someone who also doesn't want to be there, kind of, which yeah, doesn't make sense. Potentially like they're with friends there, but they yeah. don't actually like the bar. Yeah, I mean, America's a different place as well. To be it's fair, it's very it's different. Pretty much all dives, doesn't it? It's all like, yeah, and it's. Just, I mean, I, I just had bad habits, bad instincts with that. I was, I was more of in a hookup phase of my life. I wasn't interested in anything long term. I wasn't interested in anything um, of substance, really. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Nothing in wrong fact, with I it. I kind of feel like I feel like deliberately searching for the opposite is a bit weird. No, do you not do you not find that? No, no, I I, I agree with you. I don't think that. Um, I think it I think makes what more I reali- sense. Yeah, but I think it I think makes deli- more sense to be out like focusing on the nature of it. Like looking for someone you want to marry is a bit weird. I feel like looking for someone you want to have sex with is perfectly normal. That's just and then and then accidentally, not accidentally as it's a bad thing, <laughs> but then like if you really like each other, then you end up spending time and then you, then you, then you actually properly hook up. Do you see what I mean? Yeah, 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 properly. And I agree. But I, and I don't think I shifted from like, oh, I want to search for uh, a life partner now. I just, I just was like, I don't want to search for more hookups. They weren't going anywhere. I was like, oh, it okay. just seemed repetitive. Okay, I was like, okay, I've, I've done this and uh, it's fun. And maybe I'll come back to it if it, it doesn't, you know. But I just wanted to live life. And I was like, I'm done with bars. Um, and that was one of the only reasons that I was continuing to go to them was to look up for someone to, to have sex with or whatever. Like it wasn't, it wasn't because I enjoyed hanging out with my friends at the bars anymore. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Well, yeah, you, you're at that age, I guess. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Otherwise like the apps, the apps don't work. No, oh, fuck the, the apps worse than a bar. Well, no, 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 no. Because in a bar, in a bar, I'm per- I'm perfectly comfortable talking to someone in a bar. I'm not comfortable talking to someone on an app. So unless they want to go on a date, like from the first message, I give up. Yeah, no, that's what I'm. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to try and like convince you to be interested in me. I will do that face to face for sure over a glass of wine. Yeah. I'm not going to. I'm not going to do that 
on this man like there's no fun in that whatsoever I, that, that's what i'm saying yeah it's like it's like the but bar use, without use, the fun use, use a selection of different emojis to try and lure them in some like. people are real good at that man i have friends that they got game or whatever like they 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 know how to be themselves and be interesting on on text i'm so disinterested in it but see this is the thing this is the thing at a bar or like in any social scenario your boy's got game brandon don't don't worry about that oh i know you but do on this <laughs> yeah because i'm i'm quite good at just just talking off the top i guess maybe yeah. whereas messages and also i'm learning at university essay writing eventually once i get in the flow of it my writing is quite good but i overthink it way too much yeah yeah same as the text and then i end up saying i end up thinking about it for too long and then i'll send a message and then i'll, I'll like you'll read it 15 minutes later and like oh god really <laughs> wow oh yes yeah that's a new skill for me too i'm learning how to text because everyone wants to live in that world now too i realize that not everyone's like me or you where i'm like yeah let's just call each other let's just be in person let's but a lot of people they want to do things on their own time they want they want the text they've adapted to the technology more than me and they like it they like it yeah yeah they okay, like the simplicity yeah. they like the freedom it gives them with you know when they interact with people but i so that's been struggle for me is is adapting to the text that people really like to do but you know whatever also, i think i think body language is very important and mm -hmm. if you've met someone in person you can kind of know that they like you before you even ask them out yeah what is it 90 you know, 70 you know I mean? is nonverbal communication i exactly i don't want to i don't like to I sift through it i think that's is that actually true it's a number. We know we know that it's bigger than fifty. I think is nonverbal, which would make sense evolutionarily okay. speaking. Like we've been we've been communicating through our posture and presence and eye contact for a lot longer than we've used words. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a, there's a certain look that if you get that look, I don't know I don't know how to describe it <laughs> because I think I think it's probably different with different women or whatever. But there is there is a look that once you've clocked that look, you kind of know that you like. Your confidence goes up massively, especially if you if you fancy them as well or whatever. Yeah. And then and then boom, and then then you start talking, and then you kind of you've 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 gained confidence. Whereas from these messages or them, just because they swiped yes, that does not mean shit. No. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, absolutely. So I, I I had them and I got rid of them. They can lie. Yeah, they can't lie in person. Basically, you know. Yeah, you might you be able to pick up on it as well. You could, yeah, yeah, you could, you could, they could play it cool in person. They could play it cool over text, but there's no context. There's no intonation, so you don't even know if they're saying it coyly or if they're saying it sarcastically or abruptly or, <laughs> or if they're genuine. It's just, it's too much. I don't like it. I don't like it either. I think it's a waste, and I don't want to live life through my screen. The more, the older I'm getting, again. I realize yeah, it's, that's it's true. That's you know, true. I, I'm grateful that the Zoom technology exists. I can get to see you right now and, and hang out for a little bit. This wouldn't have happened without Zoom, you know. Thousands of miles. Thousands yeah, of miles. Yeah, there are things, but then there's, there's focusing on it too much. Yeah, but yeah. The whole, the whole dopamine release from like getting a like on one of your posts is just is, is, is unhealthy. Yeah, it's real bad. Very unhealthy. Um, like I'd much more we're gonna have much more fun not that this isn't but we I, I would much rather hang out in person I'd like to just be able to to converse with people and for a long time I didn't do the podcast with with any technology because of that because I was like yeah hey, what's the point if you're gonna do it through zoom I might as well just not do it at all is what it felt like yeah I mean if, if you can do it in person you should it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's better um, and also I think we'd both be enjoying the scenario more than we are now wouldn't we yeah <laughs> which would then which would then in theory make the podcast more interesting i think um so yeah i don't know the, the, the one worry i have because of these dating apps right the last point on this topic yeah um is potentially as the days and months and years go by right with all these apps and online dating things i think it's going to become less acceptable to approach someone mm. in the real world mm. potentially is that possible? There's like very much. There's, or there's, it, or uh, there's it, people. It, it make, it's not only possible. There's people that I've heard that believe that basically we're gonna we're gonna split into two different races um, or species. Almost. Yeah, this, this this sounds like you're going on some Joe Rogan. Oh, I'm going shit. on some Joe Rogan Go shit on. for sure. I mean, <laughs> I, I think it's a fun thought experiment, but like there might be a time when people subscribe to. All right, I don't like people are like you know what technology gets so far beyond. 
it probably it doesn't happen that way. I don't I don't see a way forward where we you know divide ourselves in half. Um, everyone's too dependent on technology, but but you might have to start communities where people are like uh, we we are more extroverted or we're more introverted or we're more technology acceptant or we we ban technology. Well, and Who wait, knows wait, what's so going what on? What are you saying? Is that how you'd find your partner based on? those characteristics i don't think you i don't know man i really don't know i think people are I, I think human beings are changing a lot with technology i think we don't even really realize it but the ability to even have friends across the globe like we're you know we're doing here it's not normal it's not natural we're not really sure what it's doing to to our social networks like you know i have a lot of i have a lot more stock in in digital friends than i ever would and it's not a lot, but I have a lot more still, infinitely more than I would have had back in, you know, 10 20, or 30 years ago. Yeah, okay. And that's, I mean, and that's, you know, I, I don't know. I'm not sure. And uh, I, I'm, not, I'm not worried about that. I'm not worried about it. What I'm, what I'm interested in, though, is like, I think it just changes. I think generations like you and I, we're, we're older-ish. You know, I'm 31 now. So we're going we're gonna to grow up where there's a lot more human interaction going on. And we'll probably die eventually where where we're at a point where maybe you're saying where, where you're saying is right where people are more dependent more communicative or more they communicate more through digital means and also the digital means will become more expressive you'll be able to get okay. body language somehow through your phone potentially is that not good to see okay one thing i do kind of want is for the sort of technology scientists or whatever mm. can they just all retire <laughs> i think i think i think phones are good enough though they're as good as they need to be Do you know what i mean like yeah I, i'm scared of robots i don't know why <laughs> not because of sci-fi movies or anything i just like i just don't think the world needs them yeah, you know do, what i mean do you believe Obviously, potentially businesses can sh save money with them <laughs> but our economy i don't i don't know i don't i don't think they're good for anyone do you believe that there's like a certain natural th element i know you're not typically you, you know you're not very you don't speak very spiritually or anything like that but you think that people they're missing out or they're like they've lost a connection to what what it means to be alive or, or something like that when they when they are so far into the technology or like if we go down that road where we're really just dependent on robots mm, no because i think that's just that's just it's it's exaggerating it too much mm. we're all still human we're all still in touch with nature we're all still in touch with each other um we just we just have like this little well i've got two i've got two windows on my bed right now mm. to <laughs> this vast thing that is the internet but as long as you always know it's it's like as long as you're not one of these spend too much time on it i don't know start thinking that that is the real world start trusting what you believe I mean, start believing what you see on YouTube videos and things like that. Then, then it's fine. Just, just be be wise about it. I guess same same as parkour and life. Separate parkour from life. Separate this from life as well. Like that's that's your what life I mean. and your your life and your existence is very vast. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I think that's why a lot of people go down that that you know, like to me, that actually sounds super interesting. I, I would like to. I would like to some point in my life spend a fucking month just in the Himalayas or something just just complete just yeah. sitting around just thinking about stuff. Like that's something I've never done. Like to me that sounds interesting. That sounds more interesting than uh, a lot of things. Is uh you know, uh, maybe I've I've smoked too much weed or whatever it is, but I want to spend some time in like meditation now even though i don't i don't even like really i don't think it's like oh i'm like a special human and i'm gonna like tie into the cosmos necessarily i just think that like i don't know like there's something about just when the idea of just being completely unplugged and just going inward that sounds fascinating to me i think i think personally if i was going to do something like that i wouldn't just go and think i think i'd like try and become some sort of like warrior i train mm. i think get really good because with a bow the bow staff thing, the interesting thing is obviously humans are quite intelligent right as as yeah, yeah. species um 
And I don't think parkour, for example, or like climbing a mountain or any of these things really require the full level of our intelligence. But actually, things like mathematics, science, they do. Mm. And the use of technology can get you to that. And that, like, I do think there's value in where society has gotten to. It's the maybe my biggest problem is the fact that like a six year old kid knows how to use my phone better than I do. Yeah. So they're not, I don't know. I don't want to be one of these like annoying like old school people, but like they're not out climbing trees or anything like, but we make these comparisons because again, it's the same as us saying music was better 10 years ago. Parkour was better 10 years ago. It's just because we're, we're of a previous generation We're we're over the hill. Sorry <laughs> to say, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, there's no, I mean, I haven't looked into it, but I don't think there's actually much spiritual evidence. Let's say that, kids using technology from AI age is actually bad for them at all. Yeah. But yeah. it does worry me at the same time. Yeah, well, I know. I, I don't I don't have any theories on it. I'm just interested in it. I'm always interested in, in new experiences because I haven't tried that. That's really what it is to I me. Think, haven't I tried think people it. just take it too far, though. I think overuse of technology is not necessarily bad as long as you're always aware that you're using this technology. It's not a part of who you are. It's a means to a goal like being able to chat to you for example and yeah. then get it onto youtube oh hang about i think we're having a group chat tonight apparently let's see what time that is what you got who'd you got i mean obviously because of this current situation most of my social interaction i go out and i train and i'm a bit naughty i train with eli and harry How dare the you? only two people they're the only two How people i've you? seen so, since this, across this entire quarantine and they will remain so until we're allowed to sort of I mean, I think this is as much as it's a horrible virus, it might be killing people. I think it's quite cool. It's kind of, it's getting us all used to staying at home and everyone's exercising because that's the only time they can leave the house. <laughs> um, like, it's bad for the economy. Yes. Yeah. I, think, I think, yeah, I think that the weather's amazing. And obviously, I'm just being an idiot, but part of me thinks it's because of the lack of pollution. It probably isn't. Are you still there? Um, yeah, yeah, I'm there. And yeah, I've like, I don't want it to last forever, but I'm just saying it's quite good. It'll be good for the video. I would like, I would like the pubs to be open <laughs> Christmas time. Yeah. Hopefully by Christmas, because like, especially in Cambridge, it's quite a small city. There's quite a good like sort of social community with people my age and like, Christmas is very, very important pub time. Mm, I'm, I miss like your chosen, your, your friends are your chosen family, aren't you? Aren't they? Yeah, yeah, they really are, and that's that's why I was surprised. Not, I mean, it's cool that you actually still have that really strong bond with some of these people, like John Reynolds, who I'm sure you rarely get to see. I don't know how often you get to communicate, but. Um, well, I mean, we we were like this yeah. whenever I was in America or he was in the UK, mm. um, and good friends with Ben too. And he's 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 a stand up gent as well. Yeah. I know it's I know it's terrible, but I will admit that like it is actually unfortunately rather wise to select your friends a little bit. Yeah. Or at least the people you the people you stay in touch with. Absolutely. On a high level. Right, let me just quickly Okay, awesome. Yeah, nine PM I've got ages. <laughs> yeah. I mean, no, I'm with you, man. I've 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 uh I've come across the same things and for me it's been like because like a bond i think bonds are forever mm -hmm. like a friendship bond is forever so you don't necessarily need to maintain it yeah or like i mean and i don't know it's it is it is just tactical and smart i guess well iron and, and I, 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 I don't mean i don't mean keeping friends because they're going to benefit your career or your that's that that I think is a bit shallow. No, you, yeah. you can network fine and like be sociable, but proper friends, proper friendships. What I'm trying to say is just like people that sort of inspire you and push you, people that are close enough that will tell you when you're doing shit. Do you know what I mean? If you're doing something wrong too much or whatever, mm -hmm. um, do you know what I mean? The friends that actually care about you and care about themselves as well. I think that's important. 
kind of like you you, you boost each other up. Yeah, so that makes sense. Yeah, of course. Same as you would in parkour. Same as me and Kai did when he lived in Cambridge. You sort of you keep pushing each other to a higher level, and in, I think in life you should do that with your friends as well. John's very. I mean, I speak highly of John. John speaks highly of me. Mm. Um, and he is. He's very excited for these videos and um, a lot of things to come out because I think he's always had a go at me. He thinks that I deserve a bigger respect or whatever than I actually have because I've always slacked on social media and things like that. So <laughs> maybe I'll actually go and get it for him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, dude, I don't know. I, I I know what you mean though. I feel like I've lost a little bit of that, that sense of brotherhood and like the sense of, uh, not just brotherhood, like whatever friends, mostly, bro- mostly men that, that I, that I feel like really pushed me. Like I didn't do the best job of like figuring that out as I got older. And that was part of what I got like too deep into parkour and too deep into my own thing where I was like trying to make it a career and all that. Um, that was a lesson learned for sure for me. Yeah. Don't try and make a parkour career. It's a bad idea. (laughs) It's a real bad idea. And also like, I, I don't know. I think also if you think about it from a different perspective, let's say, I don't think, being good at parkour deserves a career either personally yeah, that's that that question fascinates me it's like what kind of value do we really provide are we really when i when i look at yeah, it yeah we're, we're doing nothing we're doing nothing for society mm. except for entertainment basically maybe like maybe to be a coach or teacher or whatever but then really like there's no there's no use for that either because i don't agree I'm not against competition, but I don't agree with the way any of the parkour competitions have been set up to the point where I, w- I don't respect anyone that's won Art of Motion, for example, mm. because in my mind, they haven't actually beaten anyone, really, because <laughs> I think the judging system is just a bit, it's a bit naff, which is a, it's like an onomatopoeia, because naff sounds naff, doesn't it? But um, <laughs> yeah, do you see what I mean? Like, yeah. I d- yeah, yeah, no, I do. Yeah, it, it, it's never interested me. After uh, involving myself in it for a while, I realized that uh, I, I was so I was I was relieved as fuck when I came to that conclusion. I was like, "Thank God, I know I don't want to do this anymore." And maybe it's just because I'm a quitter. I have a new I have a new thought that I'm pl- playing with. <laughs> that you're a quitter. No, no, no. That you should quit. You should always give up. I want to. I want to hashtag always give up. And that's because. If you just give up, it also, in a way for me, it's just like, it means you're not attached to it. It's kind of like a Buddhist, maybe or a Zen principle. But if you, if you're not attached to the idea of like, oh, this has to happen and you, and you give up, I've had my best training days when I give up sometimes when I'm like, I'm done training. I don't want to do it today. Then I, then I don't care. And everything I do is natural. And for me, does that make sense? Yeah, well, I think that's that's to do with your outlook, though. I think if you're if you're leaving your house to go to train and you're telling yourself you're going to have a sick day's training, that's bad because if if the first ten minutes aren't good, you're going to get pissed off and then you're going to have a shit day. Yeah, I think it's 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 better. But I mean, I, we all do it. I I often have the best days training when I didn't actually plan to train. I just went out. Yeah. Um. <laughs> because yeah, there's no. It's it's like, I don't know. Maybe you're, you're being more genuine. If that makes sense, you're doing yeah. it for you. Yeah. Yeah. For me, I think, I know it sounds ridiculous, but it's just like, if, if you, if you give up and then you still want to do it, then, then you know, you want it. Whereas if you're saying, <laughs> whereas okay. if you don't give up and you're like, I'm not going to give up, then it becomes about not giving up and actually not what about what it is that you want to do. That's all I'm trying to get at. I think you're being a bit silly. I am being a bit words, silly. Yeah. But I like it. I like it. <laughs> um, I don't know. Yeah. It's everyone's different, man. Everyone's different. Do, do your own thing. If you want to do parkour to try and make a career, cool, do it. But I just, I'm just giving you your probability to succeed in my opinion is low. Mm. And I've been in the, I hate the phrase. I've been in the game (laughs) for a long time and I know all the players. All right. So yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. What, what would it take, do you think? What would it take for parkour to actually become a viable path for an adult, a, a, a man who wants to raise a family or somebody who wants to contribute to society at a... At a... Uh, I think the first one is... Well, no, sorry. The second one, I don't think it's possible. I don't think you, you can't... 
I mean, maybe, okay, I did see a clip of, I think it's in America somewhere. They're like, um, it's like some rather old woman. Credit to her. Um, seems like a legend. She's like done it basically as like some sort of light, gentle physio for old people. Mm-hmm. Keep their bodies in shape. They just do like lots of movement training. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, in the park, and I think it's I think it's 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 a great hobby because it's 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 free pretty much. Um, because we all wear trainers anyway, don't we? Let's be honest. Yeah. Um. But it is like you. I can't big it up too much. Obviously, like getting older, for example. I don't like training in certain spots anymore because say they're, they're quite residential or they're like, I just think private property, but like, they're like seriously, mostly, mostly if it's like next to someone's flat, like I kind of, when I was 18, yeah, of course I just train all day mm. um, until I get kicked off or whatever. But now I'm just like, Oh, can we not, can we not train here? People? <laughs> I don't feel good about it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 And that's because you are, you you're trespassing and like, like you, you they're not your walls you don't own them i'm not saying i don't think we, we don't damage much as no. as a community in honesty i really don't think we damage much at all like a very 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 small fraction of things get damaged and a lot of them are like so basic that they haven't put a damp on the structural integrity of any of the things that we're jumping on but i still think like at the end of the day like there's a spot at this place in Cambridge and they put sort of pigeon spikes on loads of the railings and walls so that we couldn't jump on them. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people were complaining and upset. And I was like, well, you got to respect like fair play. Mm-hmm. It's theirs. It's not ours. It's theirs. <laughs> They've won. Like, cool. I respect them for that. Yeah. They've also made the place a bit ugly. But <laughs> yeah. They cut off their nose to spite their face is what the, the phrase is sometimes. Mm. But yeah, no, I, I'm, always, I'm, I'm, I very much agree with you there. I like getting kicked off. It just makes it so that it, it, it means more when you actually get a clip of something that is hard to get because of security. <laughs> it's just part of the challenge. It's, it's, it's exactly it's part of the challenge, and I think that's a good outlook to have on pretty much everything on life. And again, it supports my theory that there's no point hating society. Mm. We, we, we get the world we deserve. Like the world is the world. That's it. It's like a story. It's interesting. If you try and think of it like a story, it's interesting. All the characters that are involved, mm, mm-hmm. how things are set up. It's crazy. Yeah, it is really crazy. But it is a rat race. And that's what I'm trying to get into. A rat race? Because a rat race, it's a phrase. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of like being successful, I guess, or whatever. Getting up early, going to work, working hard, making some money. It's yeah. a plan. I don't I th- know. I don't, I don't want to be... I don't want to end up in this sort of like... There's the whole carrot on the end of a string analogy. And whenever you get there, it always there's always another step. Mm. There's always another level in life. Like Alan Watts talks a lot about that. Yeah. Being a flaw. But I don't think I agree with him entirely. I think it's good to have goals and natural progressions. Um... And yeah, I think just get into an industry where I'm climbing based on my work entirely and not any kind of politics. Uh, yeah. I'm only saying that because I, I recently rewatched The Wire and that is just all... <laughs> is that what? All just, well, yeah, like, is that why you chose accounting? Is, is it something that you... No, I chose accounting because I'm very good with numbers and I know a lot of people who own small businesses for example um and also it's a very vocational degree to do i mean i'm I'm still in a very early stage i've got four years of education to go through i'm only i'm only nearly at the end of year one so fortunately i don't really need to know exactly what i'm doing after (laughs) my degree yeah but i think that could be a plan Otherwise, it's going to be like a financial advisor in some capacity. Being an actuary would be quite interesting because that requires a lot more complex mathematics. Um, and then you end up working for like an insurance company <laughs> trying to predict the future, basically. Uh, yeah. Future finances. Um, but I don't know. That might be a bit too complicated. That's a long road. That's like adding three more years. 
I'm sure I'll need to do one or two afterwards. I'll just keep climbing. But I want to be working while I'm climbing. And then eventually I'll just be storm, motus, um, height drop. <laughs> My friend owns a cinema company. I'll just manage everyone's books from a cafe in Sao Paulo. <laughs> <laughs> Drinking cappuccinos. Yeah, exactly. Well, cappuccinos till about four and then like caipirinhas or something. Oh, man. <laughs> so you got a good plan and that's, 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 a, that's a nice solid plan. I like it. That's uh, that's something but that we all need to do. Solid enough. Yeah, that's what I need true. To do, what I need to do is not this summer because of Corona, um, but in the summers between years of studying, I should be doing some sort of office work or like I don't know, even if it's possible, but like be like you know that like person walking around with a trolley of teas and coffees at some accounting firm or something like that, <laughs> just like in the industry. Yeah. Um, more research needed. Did you have any and trouble letting time. go of like, uh, or, or embracing that? I guess that as a as a lifestyle. You're like, you know what? Uh, no, the only thing I'm bad at is, I'm, I'm, and I luckily I've got a decent amount of time to get better at it as well. Is I'm not very good with deadlines. Mm, mm. Um, I mean, obviously you have to remember that I haven't done any sort of anything slightly academic for about 10 years until now <laughs> so it's quite a different it's quite a leap to go from just leaping on obstacles and working in sort of like the catering industry and stuff um besides doing little bits of parkour performing they're all different types of work to reading and writing and reviewing articles and stuff like that um I mean, it's annoying. This year is annoying because I actually have to do modules that I'm not interested in, that I'm not going to study after this year. Uh. <laughs> so that's annoying. Like marketing stuff, which is kind of good because um, me and two Australians are setting up a clothing company. I don't know if you know about that. Capstone. And it's good for that, but it's not good for the uni. Capstone, exactly. I've, I've been paying attention. It's just like a, you've got my attention. That's what you've got so far. I don't know what it's, what okay, it's going to be, but I, good. That's, that's, that's what I want. <laughs> that's, that's all you I want. want. I, I want can it. tell you do it. That's, that's all we want. We want everyone's marketing attention. Already. Yeah. Okay. Well, I wonder, I'm curious how many people, because obviously we like, I, I tag our Insta page, but we, we're not letting anyone follow, the, follow us. So I don't know if that like infuriates them in a good way or <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea, but we'll see. Well, as long as you've got all the requests be, come in, right? Then, then you can. Was, I mean, I think I, I, I don't know. Like, like, like we spoke about in the beginning yeah. of the this this yeah, podcast. You just don't know. <laughs> um, we're both we're both a little bit into our fashion. Let's say, like, uh. I I have to very gently. There's not that many people listening to this, but of the parkour clothing brands that have come out, ninety eight percent of the items they've all created are pretty bland borderline I don't want to wear them sorry yeah Storo made Storo made an awesome jumper you know the one that's sort of black with grey and red yeah that is a great that is a great sweater um, the Storm Harim pants are incredibly comfortable and they do look good but I think that's that, that's about it and now I should be very careful saying this because I also told you earlier that I haven't paid for anything so all the <laughs> all these brands have sent me shit for free and now I'm slating it but I mean, it's it's all research, and it's all the good thing about setting up a new park or clothing company is again, it's 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 it benefits the community um, because obviously we want to film projects and things. Yeah, yeah. Or even like kit out someone who's like up and coming. Even that that is quite good um, because like as like if anything, it's it's better than all the other stuff like competitions because that's the only way in my mind that money is deserved by an athlete if they like do some paid trip do you know what I mean like it would be awesome if Storm made enough money that they could pay Joe Hendo and Tim Champion to go film a video in Madrid do you know what I mean I don't think mm. I think it was paid for but I don't think anyone got any money for it yeah that is the dream right that is the that's the what we that's, that's what we paid all, work yeah we want to be able to go train and not do gigs commercials or compete but yeah, exactly. And, and there's a very big thing in this community of video sharing because that's how you show 
your friends what you've achieved, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and people would like to see it, and that's good. Like Breach did like jams and tours and things like that. Mm. Yeah, Sorry, I'm, I'm multitasking. You're good. No, I was just, you know, all this stuff makes me think about like, well, what what is it going to take? Like, I know that I. I mentioned it earlier, but I'm just like, I don't know what it takes. I don't know that we get to the level. Maybe the whole world's changing in a way that no one cares anymore about any of these sports. Maybe everything's on the decline and we're all going to do something a little bit different. Maybe the human no, interest. The thing is, we, we always need to remember, this is why, again, you should keep it a hobby, keep it one part of your life. Yeah. Because the only people that care about parkour are the people that do it, really. Yeah. That's it. And like, even if other people do respect it or appreciate it, they, they, they don't matter. Like in the context of our practice because it's i don't know it's 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 one of those things you you have to you have to do it and you have to have trained it for like a number of i was about to say minutes but not quite <laughs> years but like to to fully understand what it is and to watch videos and appreciate what they've done do you see what i mean yeah like a lot of people in europe let's say are into football because they all played it growing up. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I I can't watch rugby because I never played rugby. I went to a school that no, we never played rugby, so I don't understand the game. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I don't quite know where I was going with that point. Um, <laughs> well, that's interesting that we there's so many people that are interested in fighting and MMA too. Then because almost nobody fights or really knows what that is, but it's so primal maybe. I don't know. They understand aggression. And that's where that's yeah, where a lot well, of my well, attention is. one fight. Yeah. Or they know what, what it's I mean? like to feel intimidated, or they've wanted to punch something. I don't know. I mean, I, I don't like MMA. You don't? I'm not saying I dislike it at all. Mm. You just not? It doesn't I'm fascinate just, you I'm at all? I'm just not into it. Yeah. I, I'm not I, into it. I, I respect the athleticism. Um, but again, for me, it's 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 very athletic. There is some skill, but I think isn't most of it like sort of. There's not strong tactic. I don't know. I'd rather play a game of chess than fight someone. Ah, uh, interesting. Not yeah. sure that's a good point to make. I like both of I like both of them. I'd rather play a game of chess because I don't want to get my ass beat. But if if yeah, the, that's, that's, if that's the rules were fair, if the rules were fair, if like if I was if I was appropriately matched. I'm starting to train a little bit just because I want to understand if I even like it and I want to see because I think parkour is very, you know, for me, I like to acquire different sets of skills and I felt like parkour never tests your ability to deal with another person. And I think that that as a category of movement is like it probably you learn something that you would never learn in parkour, which is okay, now you're battling a human being, not just the, the environment, whatever it is, urban or natural, but you're trying to deal with something that is as complex as you, in, but it's a biological life form. So I thought, I think that that's why I'm interested in fighting and, and uh, interested in trying to practice it myself even, even though I'll probably never get into sparring because I know too much about head trauma. I don't want to get, you know, uh, yeah, I don't want to lose enough. memory and brain cells because I'm, just interested in something i just i'd i'd i mean i'm, I'm gonna say something ridiculous which probably a lot of people think sometimes the only reason i'd like to fight or learn to fight is because i've met some assholes in my time <laughs> that deserve that deserve this do you know what i mean yeah, like yeah. Smack or whatever and it's not i'm not i'm not even saying that they know how to fight and if something happened i might have gotten beaten up but there's just you can't go into something like that with confidence unless you know what you're doing yeah. No, I I think that's it's like an old it's like street justice. There's something like fundamental about it. Like for me fighting why I'm interested in it, I think it's like kind of the best metaphor for what life is kind of like. For, I mean, it's not it's a, let me let me let me be clear as no, well. I'm not trying to convince it's, you I'm, that it's cool or anything. I just I'm I'm pontificating for no reason. Yeah. No, and also I'm not saying that in that scenario I wanted to beat that person up. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying I wanted to tell them that they were being an arsehole. Ah. And not have to, not have to like <laughs> attempt to defend myself. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. And a lot of people in America will get a gun instead of learning martial arts for that for that well, same that, effect. That is so. This is why I hate your country so much. I'm sorry. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, you know, after me, yeah. and 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 you play football with your hands. That is strange. And we've squashed the ball and made it oblong for some reason. 
Yeah, it's just, it's just, I mean, I've already said enough. Also, yeah. how many countries in Europe play in the World Series of baseball? How many? Answer that. I could care less because I don't watch baseball, but I would imagine zero. So why is it called the World Series? <laughs> <laughs> There's something fundamentally wrong with, with what we do in America. That's for sure. There's something fundamentally <laughs> right. There's something right about it because it's, it's the land of opportunity in some ways. There's something you can do here that you can never do anywhere else. But that something is kind of misguided maybe by, by, by the insidious nature of, of what we value here. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, man. I mean, I'm 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 joking, really. Like, kind of, the gun law <laughs> thing is pretty bad, but they can call they well, can pay for with a cricket. Hands. Cricket is shit. just as arbitrary, though, isn't it? Yeah, but the world plays cricket. Is it? Is there big money in that? I don't know any cricket players. I have no idea. I don't know any cricket I'm players. I'm pretty sure. It's or just at least more of the world play cricket than um, baseball. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, fair enough. I don't know and why. Anyway, let's move on. What else? What else was, did you want to talk about? That was pretty. That was pretty much it. That was pretty much okay, it. Sweet. I just. Uh, uh, the last thing I would say then is just, uh, you know, I I miss you, bro. I mean, it'd be cool to hang out again soon when you do come through. It will happen. It will happen. And I I'm, don't know when. You might have to come over here because I don't plan to go to America. I mean, I guess if 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 I'm in Colorado for the wedding. Well, and I'm, I'm, I'm planning on taking a trip with my girl to, to the UK when the Corona is over. I don't know when, when that'll be. And, uh, depending on like what kind of income I can earn over the next few months, blah, blah, blah. But, but yeah, for me, it's just, it's not even, I'm not that interested anymore in, in, in traveling for parkour as much as just traveling. So, yeah. So I'm, I have to, same, I, same I, here. I, I have to come through, but I have to schedule it so that you guys are around. Otherwise, there's no real reason for me anymore. No. <laughs> well, it'd be good. Let me know. I mean, I don't know when you can do it. Yeah. I think I think potentially we're all going to be spending most of our time at home for longer than anticipated. Oh my God. Well, well what are you going to do with the rest? Of, what are you going to do uh, tonight? Are you out, out on the town? Are you? Uh, no, there's no town. There's, there's, there's this. I'm having a Zoom call with like some of my Cambridge friends. Uh, I think that's the plan. Um, yeah, that's it. And then eventually, the only, the only thing with Zoom is like the dynamic of all sitting around a table, let's say, in a pub. Mm -hmm. It's so much better than all sitting here because you're facing like nine people. And no one knows when who's talking because it, and there's no body language or anything really because it's not three dimensional. It's it's so I often like I'll join these chats and it's nice to see everyone, but it's actually better just one to one. Yeah, I've got, I'm going to call an, I'm going to call another friend and I'm going to call another friend. I planned like this is what my Friday nights are. I just call like eight different <laughs> people, drink a few beers, laugh, and then eventually I get bored and like I'll just listen to some music and uh, go yeah. to bed. Are you reading anything these days? Do you read besides studying? I listen, I'm listening to an audio book. What are you listening to? Prisoners of Geography. What's that about? Uh, how terrain, rivers, oceans, mountains affect strategic planning in battle and war over the span of history somewhat. Mm. Very interesting. Have you ever heard of the Book of Five Rings? I want to read that shit. The Book of Five Rings? Mm-hmm. I think you might be interested in this. Something Max Henry turned me on to. Who, there's this ancient samurai during the Ronin period of like Japan. Okay. And he, you know, had many, many duels and I think had this incredible record of, you know, not dying basically for over 50 duels or something like this and was regarded as kind of the best samurai of that time and then went into the mountains and wrote a book about warfare and tactics and stuff and like dictated it to somebody and uh, that's the book oh so, really yeah 
Okay. How do you? Where do I get it? It's there's audio books online. There's just Google it. You know, but it's. Uh, I think I, I need to read the actual book because obviously I do. Mm. I mean, mostly I, I just read the news, and not all of it, obviously. Um, and stuff for university. That's it. Because I'm not really. I, I I can't see myself getting into a fictional book. Yeah. Yeah. It's, do you know what I mean? I don't. I don't want to read about. Nah, some I'd rather people. read about psychology if I'm going to read about fiction or something like. I'd rather read about human. But yeah, look this up. Book of Five Rings. Me, Mediodo something, Mushashi. Mediodo Mushashi or something. Something very Japanese. And let me know what you think because I'm going to read that next. And I, I'm, I think just based on what you've told me, it's like it sounds like tactics and. Uh, skills in war or skills in in aggression are, are interesting to you somehow well a lot of it's defense as well and sort of um occupation and things like that mm. well and it's the oldest school the more and more the older i get the more i want to hear what the 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 most dead people thought about life <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> why because i think that there's the things that survive the longest like there's if they're still relevant today if people are still talking about them and they're really ancient idea then it probably was best said back then by that person because they're the person that broke that challenge or broke the thought broke into that line of logic and uh yeah i'm, I'm interested maybe, in the history I mean, of, yeah, of philosophy i but, just don't like the idea about because a lot of it is battle but Political, political geography is very interesting. All right, man. I'm a, and also, I like learning about the history of sort of Russia and the USSR and stuff like that because I am half Russian. You are? Oh, that explains everything. <laughs> that explains it all. You're the special kind of breed of white person that just like freaking has what Brit British and Russian well no, Russian I don't know about Irish, British mostly. British gives you your sense of uh your debonair attitude and your uh your class <laughs> your sensibilities but the Russian probably gives you your swagger if you for lack of a better term okay well my walk your walk and like the gangster, the G, the gangster that lives within, I think is, is Russian, Russian based. Okay, fair enough. They come from a hard, they're a hard people. That's all I'm saying. Uh, they are. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. Sweet. Right. I think we're going to have to wrap this up. All right. Cheers, brother. I I'm really gonna, appreciate I'm you doing do it. I'm going to do some writing oh, for uni. Good. I'll let you know. And, um, and I'm going to call some friends. Well, thanks again. And I'll let you know where everything drops and, uh, We'll stay in touch, hopefully, Legends. here. And, yeah, stay in touch. Come see me, uh, or I'll let you know when I'm in the States for this wedding. All right, brother. Obviously, I'll try and find reasons to be in America, but right now I have none, sadly. Yeah. No, I don't blame um, you. That's it. Yeah, man. All right, dude. I'll right, see you peace soon. Peace brother. Peace. Thank you very much. Yeah, have you too. Day. You too. I don't, know how to I don't know how to end. I'll just close I got it. you. I'm I got you. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. Probably going to get a YouTube copyright violation. There we go. But that's worth it because what do I get? 370,000 views? I don't need that fucking money. And divide that number by about 100 or 1,000 and that's the amount of views I really get. So shh, don't tell anybody. Tell everyone to give them a review. Tell them to give us a review rather. <laughs> Five stars on the podcast platforms that you know. And subscribe. Even if you don't listen, I don't give a shit fucking subscribe all right i don't need you to listen actually i need you to st to set the downloads to fucking download every time as well so subscribe and then set that download meter so just it doesn't matter if you listen to it i don't think probably does but i want you to listen to it obviously but just just you know you're just supporting you're supporting the podcast if you just subscribe that's what i'm saying we know we all know how the game works all right it's the internet age. It's a bunch of bullshit algorithms out there and they're making you do stupid shit that I don't want to do. But I got to ask you guys to do it for me because it's the only way. It's the only way I have my dream come true. My dream of talking to you guys and doing nothing else. So 
please subscribe five star reviews you know that you know the things um give us a shout if you have any ideas platform necessities you want to do whatever you need to do you want to talk to phil again clamor for it clamor and we will get him on here again uh maybe i'll go all the way to uk all right you know we get enough subscribers i can fund a trip you know what i'm saying this is the pitch this is what's going on in the back end of the episode if you make it this far i just assume you're into it so i'm just going to give you the full pitch and um yeah, but for real, I appreciate you guys. I love you all for being a part of the episodes that we do. Um, more things coming, more more and more, you know? Just, you know, you never know when it's going to end. You know, I could die tomorrow. So so if I do, I hope you guys cherish the 85 episodes you put out. But we will try to put out even more than that. And what else can I say? Thanks again, Phil. What a fucking legend. What a man. Um, be looking out for those videos. Be looking for, for his content. Be following him if you aren't already. You need to be. And yeah, everything is in the description. Everything that you can do to help and support me and this project that we are working on here. Oh yeah, and that, that too, the silence. Enjoy the silence right now, you know? Let's be honest, guys. <laughs> Let's be honest. What are you what are you doing with your life? What the fuck are you doing? Come on, man. You got better shit to do than this. You're fucking deep now. You're over two hours deep, and then you're over like four minutes into this ender clip, whatever this is. The little sandwich on the end. The bread. The bread's not the nutritional part, man. The middle part you already listened to. This is just the butt. This is the butt of the loaf. That's what this part of the episode is. And you're still listening. And the fact that you're doing that my god my god if you made it this far there's a super fan that made it this far and this is for you man i love you or woman i have a girl but we'll figure it out all right because if you make it this far i don't know i don't think she would make it this far you know in fact i know she won't and kira if you're listening to this right now i'm sorry I, that girl the other super fan she meant nothing i don't know what the fuck i'm talking about all right i'm just having some fun Deep. If you if you heard that, if you heard all the way to the end, you give me a five thousand comments or whatever. Just give me give me. I don't know. Let me know if anyone made it this far. I just want to know, and um, that'll be funny. All right. I love you guys. I'll see you soon. Peace. <laughs>